Greetings, traveler. Come on. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we can at the very least do the draft, right? So yeah. let's do that. Silver Sword, it's overpowered, right? I mean, it's really good. I wouldn't call it overpowered. I think Vine Cleaver is better. Steed is better. There's a lot of other Paladin cards that are way stronger. Um, but it's it's really good, and it's it's not being offered in the premium bucket, which is what makes it really nice right now. So I would pick the sword for sure. It's also a really good pack, uh, Frost Rider. Yeah, it's I like close. Frost Rider. Ooh, the witch is a gold one. Gold? Uh, how do you say that? Uh, cauldron. Cauldron. Yeah. Cal cauldron. Yeah. yeah, Cauldron is actually really nice and pally. I like it. It's uh, underestimated right now. <clears throat> jelly? Yeah, I like the jelly. So if you've been watching my drafts, you know what we want here, right? Yeah. <laughs> Lights light Justice. Yeah, that card's really good. Yeah. Potion? Or maybe even quality. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it. The heroism is definitely good. The cycle is nice, but the deck right now is um, it's getting fairly heavy already. Um, now that's not a problem at all. But then we can see whether we would like equality to try and swing the board or not. There definitely have been some boards where it would have been nice. I, I would pick it here, the equality. Valkyrie. Mm -hmm. Valkyrie. Kill. 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 She's not bad at all. I'd probably go with the Crusader, just because I, I feel like this deck, right now, we, we just want more stuff to defend ourselves, because we already have Jelly Sword and Witch's Cauldron. So I think you want, I think right now you want, you don't want the in-between stuff, right? Valkyrie is a bit in-between. Um, it's not amazing for your early game and your board presence, and it's also not crazy good value. It's more a card that you play in the mid-game and snowballs the lead you have. Whereas I think right now, for, for this particular list, it would be better to get some more early game and some heavy hitters. So uh, heavy hitters would be a Bone Drake, another Silver Sword, a Vine Cleaver, a Steed. So I want to reserve those slots for the cards that matter a bit more. So I pick the Crusader now to help out with the curve and then you know reserve the slot that Valkyrie usually takes for either heavy hitters or you know early game. Yeah, so here we have a a heavy hitter and we have early game yeah it's either the two or the heavy hitter <laughs> the violet worm was pretty good in my last draft so i think we are okay to pick the worm yeah. grave digger mm, it's grave digger is once again in between right it doesn't really give you insane value nor does it give you good early game so we want to stray away from those in-between cards for this particular draft, so I'd pick the Raptor. I think with the Sword and the Worm, we're okay to not pick a super big boy straight away. Okay. Um, we have a quality, so that's a good combo with Wild py Pyromancer. Definitely is. Mm. I think I am leaning the loan still. I think that... Um, cause that's that's the beauty of um, like picking those heavy hitters right now, is you don't. It's like you're you're an aggressive-ish class, but you don't need to be aggressive. You just need to, you just need to kind of get to the point where you can get your silver sword or your violet worm going. So I am I would prefer the lone champion to uh, to make sure we don't get rushed down early by other paladins or by rogues. Uh, Noel14, thanks so much for the sub. Welcome, welcome. And sorry for that bad run, guys. It's, uh, I don't know, like, I don't know what compelled my brain to sap so poorly in two games. Or was this bad? Okay. Well, me. I was, I was the reason at least one of the times. So. Uh, yeah, that, it would be <laughs> easy to blame you, but <laughs> like as a coach, <laughs> I've, I've coached for a long time, man. And like, that shouldn't, you know, I'm not saying it didn't affect me. Right. But I have, yeah, it's, uh, but it's fine. Like, like we're not gonna, we're not gonna dwell on it. Right. But just saying, uh, that session didn't count because it's just not good enough. That's 
good enough for me. That's fine. Okay. Uh, the the screen share quality so... suddenly dropped drastically, by the way. I'm not sure what happened. Okay. okay. I think I have some issues with my uh, connection. Maybe I should open the door. Because hmm. the router is far away. It's better now, though. It's better now. Okay. So, which mm. one would you like here? Um, none of them, really. Yeah, none of them are great. Um, sleepy, I think. I think so too. Yeah, let's pick the uh, let's pick the heavy hitter here, so we can pick those like really nice early game cards if we get them. So shroom could be a good one with the uh, with the weapon. So uh, shroom is one of those cards that. I but you feel, can't really protect it. Yeah. yeah, I feel it. I feel for Shroom, you need a more aggressive deck. I mm. think in our deck, we just want solid stuff to play without, uh, without protection. So I just pick the Blade Master here for another yeah. solid early game card. Ooh. Um. So I can tell you so, off the bat, it's not the Bone Mare because we have we have things that Bone Mare does, right? So we have big boys. It's mm. one of the other cards. Yeah, so we have equality again, so we can combo and always make sure we clear the board. Mm -hmm. I, I would say even without equality, I would pick Consecration for this board. It just feels like a Consecration deck because we have those early, late game cards. You just want to make sure that you uh, you don't get wrecked by a spread. Oh, uh, Stone Hill, that hmm. is. We would love the Frost Rider. It's very likely the Stone Hill, right? But I'm just uh, like, when, when this pick comes up, I just quickly check how many curve threes we have. And we currently have three of them. So, yeah, we pick the Stone Hill. If we had like zero curve threes, I could see myself picking Frost Rider. Oh. This is a guaranteed uh, Turin, right? So, <laughs> well, it's, it's not guaranteed. It, it does miss sometimes. So, I think if you. It's, it's because we have a lot of late game in this deck already that it's not an automatic uh, stone hill, but we have enough threes, so we can pick it. Definitely not shield bearer. I have, no. uh, I've learned that one. Uh, Cobalt? Yeah, I like the Cobalt for this kind of deck. It's being able to ping. Ooh. King Wands is a maybe. What a Okay. Hmm. Let's see. Mm. Yeah, it could be all three of them, really. I'd say it's not Kings for our deck, because no. even though Kings is so good, because we have this much late game, we don't need to like bully our opponents in the mid game. We just need to be okay. So we either pick an incredibly good uh, comeback card in Consecration, or we pick still a pretty good comeback card and just an insane value card in the Cleaver. So. This is a cool one. I'm really happy we picked the first Consecrate because that gives us the option to potentially uh, mm. skip yeah. this one. And I think so, right? I think we just picked Divine Cleaver and have even more stuff. Because we can we can somewhat mitigate the loss of the Consecrate by focusing on more 1-drop, 2-drop, 3-drop, and potentially even you know a curve 4. So yeah. I'm okay. The only thing I see is if it is if it's uh, mingles with uh, with the silver sword. So mm. you know that's if, that's fine. I've I've had decks with like three big weapons do perfectly fine, um, no problem. So mm. okay. Yep, yep. Draw a card. Mm. A cycle. Yeah, it comes at the expense of tempo, though, right? Like you're, you're playing, you're paying two mana for a one drop. Now, the brewmaster is not the greatest two drop out there because you can, you have to pick something back up. So tempo wise, brewmaster is also not so good. Mm. For for on curve, brewmaster would be the better one. Uh, edit ZP. Thank you so much for the three months in a row. The one six every time. All right, man. Cheers. I think it is the loot order. Yeah, I think it helps you cycle to that big late game. If the Brewmaster was a Bloodfriend Raptor, I would pick the Bloodfriend Raptor. But yeah. having to pick up something just kills your tempo. So I'm okay with the loot order. <clears throat> mm, Bestless. Very, very nice pack. So 
on turn three, we have Lone Champion, Blade Master, Frost Rider as our solid threes. I would yeah. even consider picking the Lost in the Jungle here. Uh, it's yeah. Pretty good. It's that's actually so. This is more the luxury you have when you have such heavy hitters for late game, right? You're not afraid to run out of cards. So normally you pick the Basilisk because it's the higher quality card. But I think for this draft, you just want to make sure that you have something to play and that you fall, don't fall off the board. So I prefer the Lost in the Jungle. And the Hydro? And the hydro. hydro is fine, but I think Hydro, once again, is the in-between card where it's OK mm. and it gives you a little value. Lost in the Jungle is more tempo and Basilisk is more value. So it's like the in-between card that's that doesn't yeah. really get picked here because you know, the others are better at what they do. Okay. <laughs> cool. So that's the same story, right? We have uh, yeah. the value cards and the in-between card. The Argent Protector is also tempo, though, so because the being able to divine shields and, and kill something is good. Mm. I think for this draft, I would like another Lost in the Jungle. Like, that's just it's just the upside we have of having so much value. Like we don't need. I can't the believe super you value. skip two basilisks. Right? <laughs> yeah. Insane. Well, I mean, you have two big weapons. You have two big minions. You have Jelly. You have Stone Ill. You have Cauldron. So, staying alive feels better. Uh, Swar, Justice. The sword is definitely good. I'm just thinking whether we... Because you have double lost in the jungle, which is really good with the sword. And it is an early game ping, so I'm definitely leaning there, but the crawler does give you a two, and we currently only have two twos. Mm. Mm -hmm. We only have one. Yeah, we have two. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling go like a crawler, just to mitigate that. I think we're getting there in value. Because we might pick up another heavy hitter. Because Sword of Justice is once again in between, right? It's not insane early game. It's also not insane value. So I feel like we picked the Crawler to try and help us, you know, with the early game. And then we might pick up like one or two heavy hitters, like another big weapon potentially, or a Bone Drake or something like that. Yeah. A free mana 2 5 is not bad. Absolutely not bad. We don't have anything for her right now, but it's definitely not bad. Because on turn three right now, it's Frost Rider, Blade Master, Stone Hill, Lone, maybe not Stone Hill. I'm considering the Blood Sail. It's not the Hammer, because once again, like that's that in between card that we don't need. The Blood Sail right now benefits from the Light's Justice. And then you have the two big weapons, but it's kind of too late for that. I think the Paragon of Light is fine here. Um, blessing. Yeah, I love the might here. With double lost in the jungle, like cheap tokens, straight up. It's kind of like cold blood, right? In a way. So. <laughs> yeah. A bad one. Oh, the bells. I love the bells. Yep, yeah, I love the bells here. Sound the bells. It's another potentially heavy hitter, right? By picking the bells. Because you get to, um, like, turn, turn eight, you get to buff four times, for instance. Mm. Yeah, that's really strong. Uh, we, if we have picked the the sword, sword of mm. justice, we could pick the, the jailer. I, I don't think it's so good right now. I'm I'm really not a fan of jailer in in how how the speed of the meta feels right now. I think here we just picked volcano sword, right? Pick another heavy yeah. hitter to yeah. justify skipping the uh, some of the value, right? So. I think we have enough early game cards that we can support it. The Sock or the Monk. Hmm. It is tough. We have we have Light's Justice. If we had Double Justice, I would absolutely pick the Thug. I'm considering the Monk right now just because we have only yeah, we one four it. and we could use it. And the Hench Clan is just the three three if you don't have your Light's Justice equipped. So I'm I'm leaning Monk just to have a really good mid rangey body to play. So I don't think we need insane on the thug. Ooh, okay. So 
We are a couple cards further in. Let's see if we have reevaluated our stance on this pick. It's pretty funny that you get like this. This yeah. is the third time we get. Slip. Yeah. It's it's the second time that we have this identical pick, but it's the third time that we have Basilisk versus Lost in the Jungle. So. Yeah. Um, let's let's scroll up a little bit and see what we get. So, we currently have three one drops. One, two, three, two drops. One, two, three, four good three drops. And then a Stonehill and an Apprentice. I think this one feels like a Basilisk. Because? Because we, um, we could use another Curve 3, right? And this is pick 26. So there's four more cards after this. Um, the Lost in the Jungle I picked earlier because we were kind of closing in on the amount of threes we needed. And Basilisk is like, you, you can pick Basilisk and have more threes than you need because the card is really good. But right now I'm thinking that we probably won't exceed the number of threes we want by too much. Hmm. Just looking at it, right? Because the Lost in the Jungle is tempting, but I think it's a, I think it's a Basilisk. It's just good. Yeah. It's a good card. Third Crystal Lion. So with the amount of dudes we can assemble, it could be a good thing. But Stonehill is just... Yeah, I, I think it's between the mall. It's between the mall and the Stonehill. Oh. I would pick another Stonehill. I have seen what it can do. What it can do. <laughs> it is. It is absolutely good. I'm just looking at it because we we do have a shit ton of value right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'll I'll just like I'll I'll just think out loud, right? Um, yeah. Obviously, the stone is the best card, and I it would be a good addition to the deck. It's just that sometimes it will low roll, and I'm trying to improve the consistency of the deck. It's still really likely we pick the Stonehill. I'm just thinking, how can I avoid losses, right? Because as a Paladin, winning is usually not a problem. It's the games where things aren't going well. And as long as you can avoid losses, you're usually going to get you know, a, a fairly deep arena run. And that is the goal. The goal is not to crush our opponent harder. The goal is to make sure we avoid those you know, nasty games where we lose. Because the Stonehill on its own is a Silverback Patriarch, which is, you know, a 3 mana 1 for a taunt. That is what he does for tempo, nothing more. He does put a card in your hand. Now, if that card in your hand is not good enough to justify the tempo loss, which a lot of the time is basically, well, I'm hoping I'm getting a Tarim out of this. Certain games you're going to be in a position where it doesn't really matter what you get from the Stonehill and you just want value. And in those kind of cases, you'll happily take a Tyrion, you'll happily take a uh, Furious Etten, whatnot. But I'm looking at this deck and it feels to me that we have met our quota of big things, right? Sound to Bells is a good late game card. We already have a Stonehill that's a good late game card, which is Cauldron, that's a good late game card. We have Jelly, Fine Cleaver, Volcano Sword, Silver Sword, Violet Worm, Sleepy Dragon. So I'm currently link thinking of scenarios where we get stuck with a lot of those big cards and we have the Stonehill and the Stonehill doesn't get us Tarim. I'm thinking of those moments mm. where maybe but the Maul just helps us ping something off and we don't die. Because obviously the Stonehill um, looks like a better card and it is a better card, but we are currently on pick 27, which means we have a very good idea of what the deck is good at and what it's not good at. And I think it does value fine right now. So this is actually a really tough one for me. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hmm. I'll let you. So Maul is like 25% for a bad one. But... Yeah. 25% for yeah. a very good one. I think it's Maul. Just based off the situations that I laid off, I think it's the mall. Okay. No. Yeah. Yeah, let's not use any more time. Yep, yep. It's just on that one. Tough one. Okay. Mm. So, messenger? 
I think I prefer the shard. That's that's kind of the beauty of having so much uh, value. You can really just pick low to prevent those early game losses, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's it's good effect to freeze an enemy. Yep, for sure. And we have cauldron, right? It can be really good with cauldron. Um. Hmm. So spider tank. It's a good pack. Once again, to analyze, right, what the deck wants. Let's look at our turn three. I think that's the most important thing here. You have Frost Rider, you have Blade Master, you have Lone Champion, you have Paragon, you have Basilisk, and you potentially have Maul. So you've hit your quota. You have yeah. sufficient good three mana cards. I would say that our Paladin deck in a lot of matchups is going to be a bit more the defender, or at least, you know, it's going to be the defender more on average than your regular paladin deck. So I'm actually looking at the apple bomb here for you know fast rogue decks, fast paladin decks. Sometimes the taunt on the apple bomb and the health you get from it is enough to help you stabilize and allow you to get the value of your stone hill, allow you to get the value of your big minions, your silver sword, your vine cleaver. So I'm thinking the apple bombs are for survival here because we've hit our quota of uh, turn three minions right now. Yeah. And we also don't have any five drops. Yeah, that is, that is by design though. Like you can't both have insane early game and insane late game. So it's by design that we've cut down on the fours and the fives. Yeah. Draw the lowest cost menu. What is that? That would be. So once again here, right, just look at what the card represents because you're not necessarily, okay, so obviously you want to look at the individual quality of the card. You want to see, is this card a good card, yes or no? But because of the bucket system, a lot of the time the cards are gonna be roughly equal in power level, right? Now that doesn't mean that you have to blindly trust the bucket system and say, oh, Blizzard 100% puts you know all the cards in the correct bucket. I think Silver Sword is still a little bit too low. And, you know, so certain cards, you go like, what is it doing here? Yeah. But that being said, I think this pack is like comparable, right? You can, you can look at this. Mm -hmm. So I think it's not the Piper. I think you either pick the equality to try and swing the board because you have a consecration, you have a cobalt apprentice, you have double lost in the jungle, you have, um, a mall I think That's, that's like. So about it so we definitely have some tools to try and swing the board back or to go like a crawler to prevent being overrun in the early game so i'd say it's a tough one because it's it's hard to see which one is going to be more important the mid game swing with the equality or the um early game tempo with the crawler we're currently on four ones one two three twos my gut reaction was the crawler here yeah you like that card. I don't know why. <laughs> it's not so much that. It's just if you can go Lost in the Jungle turn one, go like a crawler on two, like you kind of have the yeah. board. That board is yours after that. True. Uh, true. Can you scroll down again? Did we pick the pirate? No. No, we did not pick the pirate. Uh, you only have three minions costing less than three in that pro piper. Yeah, but it's it's not so much is this card good, yes or no. It's does my deck need this card? Because you can have cards that are amazing in a certain deck, but you just don't need them. And if you don't need them, what's the point of picking them? So like, I feel like piper's overkill because I think we've established that we have our value. Did they do something about Steed because we didn't even get one? Uh, well, they, they reduced the amount of rares you get. Um, so there's uh, um, Steed is a rare, so that's that's why. I'm just going to count the value again, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It looks good enough. I think it's a crawler for me. No. It's close. Oof, but nice draft. Oh, and Wackerch arrives right in time to agree with me. Oh, I feel a lot better now. That's good. Is the Paladin <laughs> Master is in the chat. Right. Ah, okay. 
You said it went 12? Really? What? what, what? Did I say 12? Wow, man. It, it will go 12, no worries. Yeah, this one. Oh yeah, easy 12. All right, so what do we do for this hand? Um, thinking just keep the lone champion. I agree, yep. I think I'm just, I think my brain is starting to uh, leave me, guys. I'm, uh, I, <laughs> doesn't sound good. <laughs> I know, I know. Because I don't even remember saying that. Uh, had a had a rough couple of weeks. It's fine. All right. Mm, pass. Yep. Pass. Mind if I roll need? Okay. Let's have a loot order contest. I play the two rub. Or do we coin? Oh no 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 no. Oh, sorry. Can you repeat that? Yeah, we coin a uh, free drop. Frost, Frost Rider, I think. I think we're actually okay with the lone champion and freezing our guy. Freezing? Like we, sorry, like we coin the lone and then next turn we'll freeze our guy. That's what I mean. Okay. Like it, I think it's worth the, because uh, essentially what you're doing is you're getting two additional health on your Frost Rider that way. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, because he didn't, he doesn't hit. Mm. Yeah. And if he does this, then that's okay with us as well. Yeah, now we just frost right here. Okay. Will you try Warlock? Only when Paladin and Rogue isn't offered. I need to practice Paladin and Rogue way more for next month. I've been trying off classes and as a result my Paladin and Rogue is not as good as it should be. Monk? Yeah. And we're fine trading. That's kind of the advantage of having this, uh, this many heavy hitters. So a deck like this, you're you're just way happier that you picked, you know, cards like Violet Worm and Volcano Star, because uh, earlier on we could have picked those uh, those other cards, right? Those uh, the three drop instead of Worm, for instance. Oh. We could blessing the four two, kill it. Then... Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking at Sound of Bells in conjunction with that. Um, um... Yeah, and some of the battles two times on the monk. Mm. Or do you? Oh, you want you want it to live, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, five. I think it's we're gonna not have perfect damage, but that's fine. I think sound the bells, the frost rider, one time always happens, no matter what we do. And then yeah. I do like sound the bells, the monk, so he can shadow madness. And then I think we just might the Frost Rider and trade with the Frost Rider. And then we keep a four power minion, which he can't death. Because that's my main concern. That if we buff the if we buff the monk, he will uh, death it. He can death the eight mm -hmm. one, that's not a problem. Four eight this early in the game is quite the challenge for priest. Yeah, spare lash. So we could play the two and the four and just trade. So if you play the loot order, Shadow Madness, kill the Arrogant Crusader is really annoying. So against Priest, it's a lot of thinking. What if he has this? What if he has that? Um, so I definitely want to trade. I think the trade is correct. So we can start with that. So I would say that if we Arrogant Crusader, we cannot loot order. We have to hero power, which would be acceptable. The other one is to get the jelly rolling. Um, the question is, do we have enough stuff on board already to protect the jelly? Um, mm. We have. Uh, yeah, I think Hero Power and Arrogant Crusader is fine. It still puts a lot more pressure on the board right now. Because then next turn you can equality jelly if you need. Why didn't you want the. the Shadow Madness on Loot Order and then kill the 5 2 is really bad. Ah, yeah, yeah. 
So so 5-2 into the 6-5 seems like a good trade. Yeah, the other one is a quality to preserve your guy, but I don't think that's required. So I'm okay with 5-2 into his guy. And then we could play the uh, rotten. I think this is a good moment to get the jelly out, right? Because we can jelly okay. hero power, still have a quality to protect it. Next turn we can play the apple bomb to protect it, so it's a good turn to get the jelly operational. Yeah, so jelly hero power, go in. So against priest you want to be very mindful of what shadow madness does against your play. That doesn't mean you'll never make a play that's vulnerable to it, but that means you'll look at your alternatives, and if your alternatives are reasonable, you should probably go with an alternative play. Ooh. Yeah, after we kill it, we also, of course, we want to consecrate. So, so we have four mana left. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if we kill it this round. Okay. There's an option to leave it alive. Yeah, and then just play. I think you're definitely playing Apple Bomb, and you're going face with the ones on the left. Keep the dudes for now. So play Apple Bomb. The guys on the left go face. We're definitely trading one dude, and we're hero powering. So face with yeah, trade a dude, a one one, yeah. and then hero power. And I think you go face with the rest. That's fine. Because we're going to spawn a uh, another taunt, right? So that's more something you learn when you have a thing that spawns more stuff. Oftentimes, even though you don't really want to trade, you just trade one and then hero power to not lose a minion. Because mm. technically here we could push one more damage and not hero power. You could have also not played the apple bomb, but the apple yeah. bomb makes it so that you probably can hold on to your equality. Oh, well, maybe not. Let's see. <laughs> well, so we equip the wine cleaver and go in. Um, I think this is a good equality turn, right? Because we can equality, trade one dude into the shard, okay, trade I'm one dude into the worm, one. then consecrate. So bump, bump, consecration, go face, and then we see what we have. So currently four minions, we're gonna go up to five. I think just the hero power is good enough. So I think with Violet Worm, your your instinct was to clear it, which is understandable because when you're when you're still like getting familiar with exactly uh, no 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 oh my god <laughs> when you're still getting familiar with exactly what works, you're you're way more incentivized to uh, to clear. Hmm. Wine cleaver and then Basilisk to. So this this is a this is a bit more of a difficult one to get, but um, if you vine cleaver lost in the jungle hero power go face he can't heal his face, so if a one one survives you win, he can't play statue either because he the life steal will kill him, so it it would have to be some weird taunt like a mastodon or something. Hmm. So I would just lost in the jungle vine cleaver hero power, and uh, smack him in the face. Because if you kill the 5 4 and he plays like a bigger a bigger minion, he might stabilize. Whereas now he has one turn to stabilize. But what I was saying earlier about the worm is that when whenever you have a minion with a nasty death rattle like that, your instinct should be to not kill it on that turn yet. Unless you know you're on very low health or you want to protect the minion on your board, which and was neither the case this time. And why is that? 
you're saying? Uh, well, I mean, the jelly was protecting itself, and we were on oh, yeah. high health. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but why? Why shouldn't? Why should the insect be to not kill it? That oh, it's okay. So I, I will. We'll, we'll finish the game, and then I will uh, explain. Oh, he's going to ping his own Alkani to try and find something. Okay, I can respect that. Or not? What's he doing? I don't know why you're saying that, G-Pack. <laughs> okay. We have enough. That's good. So, um, what's... So let's, let's take Harvest Golem for a moment. Harvest Golem can be a 3 mana 2 3 that will, once it dies, spawn a 2 1, right? Or if you kill it in one go, you make it a 2 3. Like it's way, way better to not lose your Jolly versus Nova. Or, like, yeah. I thought he did something specific where you guys were like, ah, punished. Prone the weapons? Yeah, throw the weapons. Uh... We can keep the three. That's fine. I was looking at the early game. Mm. Okay, on the four. If this was against the paladin, I would go hard mole for a more early game. Yeah. Job's done. Actually, it might even be correct to throw the three. How many do we have? The light protects. Yeah, it would have been fine. Yeah. All right. The frost rider shows up. That's good. So we can just hear our power. Yeah, we'll be a bit more careful with the mulligans. That was more an autopilot mulligan. We have four things for turn one and four things for turn two. That's enough for us to look for them. Okay, four four. Rusty. Mm -hmm. Jungle Don't you eat anything uh, during a whole session? Uh, no, but I'm, no? I'm, I'm used to it, so it's really not that, that annoying for me. Okay. Uh, yesterday I ate something during the break, so I streamed for 8 hours, then I ate, and then it's fine. It's... Hey. Thank you for the bits. Robin, thank you again, man. Thanks so much for the five and a bit. I, I can't read the message, it's pissing me off. Well, hmm. Sorry, uh, let's let's do the turn. What do you want to do? Yeah, I kind of want to kill the free five, so to do that I have to blessing of might it. Yeah. Because if I just trade in, he can... I think so, yeah. You might, you trade, and you play the blade master. Because if you, if you don't, then he's going to kill your guy, and it's going to be really awkward. Thank you so much, Robin. Yeah, solidifying that number one. Let me see if I can get on Streamlabs and look at it there. Because it's not showing up in my chat. <laughs> really? Mostly correlates. Share 500 pips mostly correlates with boredom. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. You want an apple bound here? Mm -hmm. It's definitely oh. fine. Yep, apple bound's good. I like how he didn't want to take the damage and got rid of his shield. Yep. Yeah. He was only down 31, so it's understandable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Didn't take seven what it was, I know. Okay, Isa. Cool, cool. I thought he'd be doing that. Yeah, the way how he queued it up, it felt like it. 
Uh, Rogue went three, uh, mainly due to my errors. There were two turns that were crucial that were misplayed. Rough run though, and not a great deck, but still. Mm. Infinite was possible. Not much more than that, I think. Okay. <laughs> Play the Dialigo face. So he will trade two into the Apple Bomb, one into the thing, two into the Jelly. The other one we play Crusader Crawler. He will trade two into the Apple Bomb, two into the Crusader, and you still have your Crawler. So purely based on board, the Jelly is worse. So I think Crawler Crusader Go Face makes more sense. What would and then next turn we could Jelly with the Raptor potentially. Oh yeah, true, because it summons. So that's just based off, that's just like looking at the trades and what happens, right? Yep. It's mainly because you get to play the 2-3 and the 2-3 is very good on this board. <clears throat> There's an option that he just goes face here. Mm. That's pretty annoying. And he will go for that option. Yeah, so now five and two. So we play maybe just jelly and hero power. I'm thinking about it. Yeah, so if we jelly, three one will kill the jelly. After a two two, we'll kill the one two. That's something we cannot prevent. If we play the raptor, the other two two will kill the raptor. If we hero power, then he will free kill the one one. Um, so you do kill another thing. Next turn, you'll Silver Sword his 2 1 or whatever he plays. You get a 6 power Crusader, which can then free kill potentially 2 1 if necessary. Yeah, I think it's full tempo here Jelly and Bloodfen and Go Face. Oh, we. Yeah, Jelly, Bloodfen for sure. I'm thinking if we ever take down the 3 1, that makes sense. So play it, right? Play it this way. Uh, if you take down the 3 1. No, you go face. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. You get to keep a Bloodfen Raptor if you do that and you absorb his hero power. That's not enough for me. <clears throat> oh man, the ordering on that is annoying. Okay, so you. Yeah. So you could just play the volcano sword or see what you get. I'm thinking it's just sword and hit his guy. And the next turn we can either play a taunt or volcano sword hero power, kill his guy again, right? Like with face, right? And just hold the mini. Okay, I was just making sure. Just okay. <laughs> yeah, just put it on three and pass. Because <laughs> I didn't specify, so Because this is still a somewhat awkward position for him. Assuming no ooze. If he has an ooze, then he's in a very good spot. Because he played that taunt in order to slow down the game. But a slow game for us is like really good. Because, you know, Silver Sword is insane if you give it time. If he had an ooze, he would have played, played it by now. So. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Robin, thank you again for the 500 bits. Long game, dude. Killing it. Thanks so much. 2,000 bits. Time waits for no one. <clears throat> I'm leaning Volcano Soul Hero Power. Yeah, let's start with Volcano Soul. Wind Fury with the buffs is going to be very fun, so I would pick the Wind Fury. Yeah. Ooh. Health? Yeah, I like the health. 
Yep. And then hero power, face into the 3-3, three, three, and... Reporting for duty. Free hit? I think so. It allows the weapon to hit and the minions to go somewhere else. Volcanoes are ready to deal some phase damage. Mm -hmm. He's just putting a wall down for UI, but I mean, UI won't do anything to the 10 health guy, so. <clears throat> Storm Watcher, my will but is better. My own. You think it's the card he kept from the Mulligan? Um, he currently has one that he drew on turn two. Uh, at least on my end. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No M's. Right. Mm. Okay, so because of both Plague and MCT, I think it would be good to get rid of one minion. Um, so hmm. you can start by playing Sleepy Dragon and put your face into the 4-7, and then the trades will become a lot easier. So now that we do that, what does it look like? 4-3 um, into the 4-4. Four, four. Yep, keep going. Okay. Um, free free into the 1-1. One, one. Yeah, and then just bump 7 phase. And then even if he has Plague, even if he has MCT, it should be fine. So that's something specific when you're, you know, when you're winning pretty hard, yeah. you want to look at how could I potentially lose this. MC Tech, your big ass Sleepy Dragon is one of them, so. Because there was probably a way to um, keep everything alive there and just trade with the Volcano Sword. I don't need no doubt, you. yeah. But you're winning this way, so why would you give him a chance? So we can sack the free two. It dies anyway. Oh, with that, he should oh. almost always be dead, right? Let's see. Yeah, yeah, just bells the recruits, trade the recruit. Into the shield? Uh, into the 4 4, yeah. Oh, you don't want it to live? Okay. He's dead, he's dead. Oh, um, he's dead. Put the Sleepy Dragon into the taunt, and then just bells your Volcano, sir. <laughs> and then, weeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
the Blade Master also has more health than the Kobold. So even though the Kobold looks okay here, it's just not necessary. You just trade and uh, drop the Blade Master. Okay. So that's a little thing, right? Like for early game, especially, yeah. just count how much power you're gonna have. Look at the toughness yeah. as well, and just be like, well, <laughs> this seems quite a bit better than the other play. Good stuff, yeah. Also, if you just like place a stone hill here, you can just chunk the stone hill for free, which is pretty big. Two silver. No. Neither snow nor rain nor witch. Oh, this is a good example of why the blade master is uh, pretty yeah. good here, right? Yep. Yeah. So we just chunk his guy, play the monk, and everything's looking good now. It's fine. Because that was his power play, right? That was his coin that was supposed to put him ahead. True, yeah. It should have been a 6 2 to make it better. Let the pain speak to me. <laughs> so that's why you never do that. Hmm. It's. Mainly because I think he might have a consecration, and I think he is inviting us to put the three six in. Yeah, but we put the four one in, or we can. What? We could even just freeze him. Let's see. Um, I'm just looking at next turn, right? If we put the four one in, then we jelly, because I feel like it's a good turn to get the jelly going. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to figure out do we have enough to deal with his minion if he steeds. What would Not that much. No, I think we will we have to trade. Right? Yeah, we will trade, we will trade. Don't get me wrong. I'm just thinking it might not be jelly because we're afraid that we might deal not be able to deal with the steed. It's fine. We'll put the four one in and we'll play jelly. Getting the jelly operational is so nice. Yeah. I like it. It's a bit weird, because we need to be able to clear his next minion, which we probably can't. But yeah, Ooh. this was like the, the downside. Oh, so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> we could always freeze it right in the place. Oh, uh, we had the apprentice as well. So Well, yeah, but if you freeze it, he still puts the steed on it, right? So uh, uh, that's, uh, that's what we were talking about. Yeah. So... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, blessing the one two. Um, that would only be four power. It's not a cold blood. True. Yeah. But yeah. So we could all. Yeah. So we could might as well blessing the three six. I think it's a good turn for the frost rider. So I think we might the monk use the monk into the five five, and then we frost rider hero power. Um, I think you can go face with the one two. That's fine before you. Uh... No, oh, fine. it's fine. It's irrelevant. I think we're getting consecrated. That's why I said it. But uh, okay. because he was he was tempting that consecration earlier, right? Truth is my nope. It's fine. We can start with cobalt here. See if we hit. It will just like improve the trades. Because we also just need board space. <laughs> <coughs> oh boy. Four. Okay, one, two, three. Didn't yeah, so the question enough. is would you like another one, two, or would you cycle the stone hill? And I think we cycle the stone hill. So I think trade the four, four and play stone hill is fine. Come on, sorry. Oh. It's fine. We can pick the Aten. I have a good board for it. My, my nest, you got it every time, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 a really good card in Paladin, but this is why we picked them all over the second one, right? Because it can happen that it doesn't give you like a crazy good card. I didn't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> you can have certain runs where you feel invincible with the stone. Oh, yeah. He did have it, I guess. No. What about hitting yourself? I mean, we got lucky there. Like, he didn't kill the 6-1 on the jelly, so we're, we're, we're fine with that. We're fine with that. Okay. Yeah, I 
Uh, start with Ersin. Just thinking if we can trade everything properly then, right? But yeah, we can add them. Keep the jelly safe. What would oh yeah, we could have sacked the 1-1, one, one, you're right, Stink Kong. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Feels bad, man. So 1-1 one, one into the 2-1, that's fine. Like the recruit. Yeah. At the rest face, right? I would freeze the 3-3 three, three and go face, yeah. Just to make sure there's less chance he can do stuff. That's better. Wow. We got so lucky with those bombers there. <laughs> Alright. But he just played so slow in the early game. And and you saw how that one card, right? That lost in the jungle on turn one, pretty much yeah. decided the entire game. I think throwing only the that kind of song? Yep, I agree. Gives you a more flexible turn four with the crab. Because it looks like we're going to be coining threes. Oh, yeah. Because we, uh, we don't have that many four drops, so I'm okay with having the crab. And, well met. and it is... Ooh, high roll. Yeah, pass. So, yeah, pass. Yeah, that's such an insane card. Oh. It's also a nice color. <laughs> yeah, looks like they gave that one the best one. Calm down, I'm a doctor. You're still alive. <laughs> hey, Nukdevka. Yeah, for sure, man. Like, this is still early for me. No. Coin Frost Rider. Yeah, Coin Frost Rider. And there is an option that we will play them all next turn, but it is likely that we're going to try and maul on turn four with the lost, because that's insane. And we play two Argent Squires for one mana and one card, and then just play other stuff. Hey. Yeah, now we can save it that way. So, oh, no, not yet. I mean, you could you could save it, but the purifier's mall can do so much more than Hello? absorb one ping, right? So this is a good practice, right? Which three drop do you think is going to be better into his next turn? Um, the two five. Why is that? <clears throat> well, because it's uh, it's the biggest body. Body. Basilisk technically deals with any body, right? Oh yeah, so that's the one. No, there's a reason why the 2-5 is better. We'll play the 2-5. You can already do it, right? We'll end the turn. What's he gonna do next turn? He's gonna ping the Frost Rider. Yeah, so that means he can only play a 2-drop. So, having the Basilisk versus a 2-drop, not that great. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> So this is something when, when you see your opponent is setting up a turn, don't autopilot just be like, yeah, play Basilisk because of Water Alley. Because he's not going to Water Alley, right? He's like, oh, we dodged something. <laughs> That's very nice. So we play the Lost in the Jungle and, and uh, the it would, it would be very strong. I'm just seeing if there is a better alternative, but it's just it. so much stuff he needs to deal with. <laughs> So I do like it. Lost in the jungle, then them all. Kill it with phase, push two. Reporting for duty. That's a reasonable lead we have after turn four. I'd say. <laughs> yeah. Decent board state. Out of my Especially, like, he can come back from this, but against Ardek it's really difficult because we have all these heavy hitters. 
Like to win against our deck, you need to be able to pressure us in the early and the mid game. Like if we are not under pressure, we would have to draw extremely poorly to not, you know, get any of our late game. Yeah. So that's a good trade, the uh, weapon and the 2 5. We have 5 mana. Mm -hmm. I think it would be good to to play the Stonehill because we could get Turin on our minions, <laughs> on our one ones. Yeah, you laugh, but uh, yeah, I mean, if we it get it, it would be funny. Um, <laughs> I think he's gonna Blizzard. I was thinking about playing the Basilisk in case he plays a bigger minion, but it's hard for him to play a Taunt. Hmm. My magic will so we can trade the apart. one for right. Okay, let's stone L. It's fine. We'll use face in the two five to kill this guy after. Quick, face two five in. Play the crawler. Push two. I think he'll blizzard. So play the play the crap. Yep. You think so? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, they just have a lot of blizzards and. I don't know, the ping on the Paragon was a bit weird. Blizz Blizzard is a rare, right? Yeah. But for some reason, they still have a lot of them. <laughs> oh, another one. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, wow. good thing we didn't play Basilisk. Wow. Whoops. Too bad we didn't get Churin. Okay. Well, if you had Tarim, then... Well, Tarim was good, but you wouldn't be able to. But that's why our deck is so Sorry. good, right? Like, normally, the game is over, right? You've always lost at this point. But with our deck, we actually still have a chance. Yeah, so we play Monk, Hero Power? Uh... Or Basilisk. Basilisk. You can always Hero Power, that's fine. You can start with yeah. that. So our opponent has one taunt in his hand. No, yeah, that was reasonably better than a blizzard. I agree, guys. We'll see horror. <laughs> Pretty good there. It wasn't blizzard. But it I'm was feeling worse. basilisk. I think basilisk better. He has an answer for everything. Sky. Apple bomb. Yeah. And Apple bomb here apart. This is just a rare. This card is epic. Yeah. <laughs> it's only good if you're behind. Well, you could argue that versus Paladins, you're probably not going to be very far ahead most of the time. And if you are, you're, you know, probably just winning. Whoops. Hello. I'm feeling Drake here. What would Uther do? We could also... Ah. Yeah, now it's a better play, maybe, to play the Worm, make him kill it, and then... Hmm. The chance that he will kill your worm is very, very low. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if he if he play worm, unless he has polymorph, he will go full face. I can almost guarantee you this. So I think it is Drake. Yeah. I see chat going like, "Oh, worm into sword! It's so good." Chat all just thinks like, "Oh yeah, he's just gonna kill it and then let you get let you get all the one ones." Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> It's like, why would a mage do that, right? Why would it be like, ah, yeah, here's a board full of 1-1s. One -ones. What could possibly go wrong? You know, it's just... <laughs> He's going to go face, guys, and we don't have a way to kill off the worm. Um, I like this because it opens up uh, the contact as well. Yes. Mm. Let's see. Yeah, but, so. I mean, it's not even fun, right? Why would, why would you ram all his minions into the worm, right? Like, I can get it if it's the right play. Or the wrong play, and it's fun, but it's not even fun. Why would you do it? <laughs> okay. So, what do you want to do this round? Um, unless we do something about those two minions, it will kill our guys. So, I think consecrate. And yeah, 
it's a decent turn to get the worm out, but I, I think we just want to slow down the game. I think you're right. So I think consecration happens. We can start with that. So our opponent's guy is on 10 health. Should we equip the sword? It goes to seven. Neither minion will be good enough. So I think it's just the monk can pass. Nice, we got him nice and annoyed. That's good. He thought he already won after that mossy horror, so he's probably not having too much fun right now. <laughs> well, that's what I mean with this deck, right? Like you see all the big boys, and we have a chance because of all the big boys. Look at this. Yeah, that's oh weird. Yeah. You already have it, so okay. Uh, hero power sword? Very likely, just uh, looking at the trades. So if, if his Volcano Sir, mm, our guy is 4, Which path 7. So we could potentially hit the Dragon, but double trade the Volcano Sir. Hmm. So hero power is fine. Equip the sword is fine. Reporting for duty. Let's see. I think face always goes into the sleepy dragon because otherwise the math doesn't add up and then I think it just makes more sense to double trade the volcano sword then, right otherwise you just leave a better minion on his end yep. mm -hmm. yeah so that's just like you know doing it step by step seeing what makes sense <laughs> Not Booty Bay Bodyguard! No! <laughs> okay, let's play some taunts then. <sighs> well, I mean, you're you're all, you're killing some of his stuff, but it's probably the Sleepy because he hasn't shown any answer, right? Yeah, or, yeah. or the Worm, maybe? Nah, I think the only way we lose right now is we take phase damage. So mm -hmm. I think it's the sleepy. Yep. Um, positioning is not relevant. And then the monk always kills a 5 4. Right? No attack weapon. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter, right? It won't survive it. So it's just to get to make the to make the turn a bit easier. So that always happens. So then we take four, we go to 19, we get a 3-3, three, three. next turn we bump. Yeah, I think it's just face into the dragon and pass. This is just a bit of health management now, right? Because we're against mage and you need to see how likely he is to win. Like he might have a pyro or something. Yeah. Positioning matters for meteor. Not because we were trading something taskless. That's why positioning didn't matter. So the question is whether we will buff our Volcanosaur in the dude or Worm in the dude. It's like all about buffing. our health. Sleepy Dragon after it kills the Booty Bay will be on 9. 8 in the pink and kill it. We're going to be on 7. If we go Worm... I think Volcanosaur is fine. Yeah, if we get Wind Fury it will be insane. Um, Can't be targeted. I think I just pick another taunt. Let's just play safe, right? If he cannot access our face, we just win. Plus uh, one. Death rattle. It's actually really good. Yeah. And then hero power, and then face into one of the two threes. Um, I guess you sack the dude. Yeah, dude into the booty, and then Drake into the two two three. If our taunts survive, like we're good. Yeah, so it's it's mainly the um, it's mainly that we uh, pick the taunt so that if he does end up killing the um, sleepy dragon with a meteor or you know whatever, the eight can't access our phase because we just we just win right. We have so much more stuff than him. I'm just playing super safe. Yeah, we're sort of running out of stuff. All the... uh, I mean, 
you have a six twelve on board, a six seven on board, a silver sword still yeah, equipped, yeah. a violent worm in hand. If, I mean, if that stuff disappears, we don't have any. Oh yeah, I mean, he'd have to do a lot of work to make that all disappear, right? Yeah. Starts with the. No, okay, so, don't say, man. Yeah. Don't say. <laughs> but even then, he would have to do that this turn, and you could still play the worm. So. Mm. I think he's, really, waiting. he's just like, he's just stumped, he's, right? He's like, but I mossy hoard an entire board. <laughs> what happened? He was impatient. He, he he loaded me a couple of times and now he just left because yeah. he was I tired mean, of seeing the rope. He tempoed his ooze against Paladin as well, right? So, like, he didn't really think about his plays. All right. Just sound the bells four times, play Might, hit his face. That's lethal. <laughs> so, he left. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. sighs> okay. I mean, the mall, right? The mall doing some work there. Because I'm usually not a big fan of the mall. But Anderithon yesterday was talking about it. And I think the more I looked at it, like the stone was really good. But I think in this deck, we were fine not doing it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I only said it because my nephew got it, I know, three or four times in a row. Yeah, um, it's it is a very powerful card if you need more value. Absolutely. Um, throwing all here. Yeah, football. Consecration is the only thing I'd consider, but with, without any curve plays, it seems a bit weird. Okay, that's pretty good. That's the first time we have lights justice. Yeah, justice on one. Very nice. So covet. Yeah, and no face hit. That's fine. You said no. I'm not yeah, no face it, no face it. No. Not go. <laughs> <laughs> go face it. <laughs> um, play the loot? Yep, play the loot. If he pings, that's fine. We could play both Raptor and Freeze's face. Yep, I like that. So I, I really like this style of drafting now, where if you're not, it's it's like you have best of both worlds, right? You have, we can pass. Um, you have the strong early game and also the really good late game, so you're not too afraid to lose value. Whereas if you're playing a different Paladin deck, you're like, eh, I don't know if I should play my guy. He might just kill it. Yeah, just play the four and trade off the, the tar. That would be decent. And it might be the play, right? Uh, you could also equality kill it with your phase, hero power, push five. Yeah. Hmm. That's the other line. Then he would ping your raptor. We don't. We only have one equality. Yeah. That's true. It is just a lot of change of pace. Because I'm just thinking what, what he does next, right? Like... We double trade, we Crusader, he plays a Water Alley, we play Apple Bomb, go face, doesn't look too bad. I kind of like the equality, just the quality hero power, use face, push five. Because you're playing against Mage, you don't really want to lower the health of your minions later in the game anyway. And hopefully we're going to be on the board. So. Yeah, I don't hate it. Hmm. Not at all. I'm sure there are uh, Titra, but I don't think they have announced any. But I'm sure they're, you know, they've been tinkering around with it. Because if if you are a deck that is more focused on late game, and you can make your opponent deal with early game aggression, that means that yeah. he's focused on surviving and he's not focused on killing you. And then by the time he's stabilized, it's too late. You have your Worm on the board, you have Silver Sword, you have Vine Cleaver. Yeah. So it's like, uh, it's what Colin so likes like, to call like fake aggression. Like you're, yeah. you're kind of being aggressive, the... but you're not really trying to kill him. Yeah, sweeping the leg <laughs> sort of <laughs> style. Okay. 
So face and the one one always kills that. The one always goes face, and then we can talk about what I want to play, right? Yeah, I think uh, Apple Bound. I it's think fine. so too. I think it makes sense. It's a good mini. Yeah. It's been a nice addition to this kind of deck. Like, I hadn't really played with it in this kind of pally, but from the draft, it just felt like it was going to be useful. Um, so face into one two into the four two, and play. We could play well. Then we could stop for playing the two threes and see what happens. I think I prefer the two threes here as well because of uh, Blizzard. I don't think I want to put my Crusader in Blizzard. So yeah, apprentice. See what happens. Oh. And then uh, Paragon hit him in the face. I think I'll sit on the weapon charge for one more turn, and then next turn I might start hitting him. Let me light the Why? Way. Just because you might want to open up the slot for Fine Cleaver or Silver Sword, but mm. I'm not like too pressured right now because we still have a time to worm. Oh, that freeze is most unfortunate. Yeah, we could play the cauldron. Well, the problem is flame strike, right? Then you just. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so I think it's just crusader hero power for now, and then next turn maybe cauldron if he AOE's probably just worm. I'm drop dead gorgeous. Drop that gorgeous. Reporting for duty. <laughs> um, is it just to play the worm and trade? Yeah, play the worm and trade, and then I'm okay with pushing one. What would Uther do? Um, take it easy there, Deepa. Also, Sigvard. Easy on the reply. There's no need to go off, guys. Still gotta behave, even if that is not around. <laughs> I'm always keeping an eye. It's just like I can't, I can't like talk at the same time. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, hi. So, buffer up to nine for starters. Yeah, bump it up to 9 for starters, trade his guy. Um, lost. Always he doesn't have Polymorph, right? So, yeah, I would do Lost, but I would just buff it two times more. It's fine. Because I feel like he doesn't have hard removal, which means he might have the AoE then. So I would just buff the worm out of AoE range and just make a monster. Yeah. So that if he if he does end up having stuff, it's just ridiculous. Okay. This is yesterday as well. It was just it's pretty funny. That's why yeah, that's why Bells counts as a big card, right? When you're drafting. I'm fine with holding a weapon still, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He emotes so he might have polymorph. After all, that day. then again, he didn't play it. So. The gates are open. Winter is here, and it's cold. <clears throat> Stonehill, see what what we get. Um. We probably want to call one. Yeah, and I'm the, thinking about Cauldron one trading because we might get lethal then, right? I think okay. that's a better start. Cauldron trade a 1 1. See what we get. Freeze. 
trade another one. <laughs> okay, play the stone. <laughs> Another stone hill. Yeah, another stone hill. We might not play it to play an MCT though. Uh, I feel like you just uh, trade and then ancestral healing your worm. Seems like a good idea. And I think you just pass. It's fine. I don't think we need to frost shock or do anything. Oh, he, he, he clearly doesn't. MCT. Yeah, he he clearly doesn't have an answer to this worm. So. MC Tech might be that answer he wants. Okay, good we saved the Frost Truck for that thing. It's fine. Totemic Might. Yeah, so freeze the poisonous. Well, we can do Stone Hill again, right? So Stone Hill next to the Cauldron. There we go. It's not exactly great for us now, but yeah, pick Terum. No. Let's see how much damage we have. So you can pick it. I'm just counting, oh, yeah. right? So 11, 12, uh, 15, 16, one off. So the worm always goes face. That's fine. So the culture would be three, four, five. Yeah, one off. That's fine. We just, uh, we just freeze the Freeze the poison and pass again, right? Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> it's a bit amazing, I must agree. <laughs> I have to agree. That cold run it is really good. I wonder. Yeah, in this kind of deck, right? Like just just in Paladin, I feel like Cauldron is like really nice. Yeah, with all the the dudes yep, yep. flying around. I just want him to show the MC tech. <laughs> like I don't think he has it like particularly likely, right? But it would just be it's so rewarding when you have this discipline to play around it. Yeah. Okay, GG. Oh, he was there. He was just like <laughs> waiting until the last moment to concede. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, stretching against the mage again. I think keeping the bells could be reasonable, and also I the two so threes. Yep, yeah, I think so too. I think we keep the threes and the bells, and then we uh, probably coin the basilisk and try to get the paragon buff. Oh, the early game that might be worse. Reality. Yes. Hmm. I might change our plans. Right, we'll see what he has. Got a pass. Yep. Like this way, we might have to coin the paragon. We'll see if that makes sense. Yeah. So we cannot ping the best this game. Yeah, coin 2-5. Yeah, coin a 2-5. Collins action plan for later? Yeah. I'm um, playing with Collins and I'm playing with Adwoke now. So I'm going to be doing lots of streaming. I'm going to probably do a run with Collins after this. Maybe not a full run. We'll see. Um, and then I'll take a break, play with Adwoke and then resume the run with Collins. If it's runes, we are happy to sacrifice the stone here. Well, if it's runes, then um, the Basilisk only loses a shield, which is also not terrible. Yeah, but we'd take six, so... Uh, five, but uh, let's, that's... I mean, we always trade into his guy. Five. Let's start with that. Yeah. I think the Stone Hill is correct, just because Mirror Entity is very bad for us if it's Basilisk. Out of my 
Etchen? Mm. Or maybe even... I think it's Gastropod. I think we still need to fight for the board. Okay, nice. Correct gamble there. That's good. <laughs> The gambler gambles. Although we did go with the minion that, you know, it could never be terrible. So, it was like a more like rigged. We couldn't really lose super hard if you guys don't know. Yeah, the power of Stonehill is the battle cry. So. Oh, that is not what he wanted to do with his turn four. Nope. Um, you could buff the 2-4 two, or 2-4, if we wanted to. So then we'd have a 4-7. Um, I think so, that's just looking so powerful, right? Yeah, buff it twice, kill this guy, push one. Yeah, Frozen Column is still a thing. It was uh, Knights of the Frozen Throne. Oh, it... Uh, it I didn't really realize it has life steal. <laughs> oh yeah, it's ridiculous. It's like you make your own obsidian statue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, making a polymorph early like that, definitely not the worst thing. I think we could Frost Rider and because we only have two one ones, so we don't really want to, Which or we don't miss the face. We can also jelly. I think Frost Rider and uh, Snail is fine. Yeah. Thank you for the five hundred bits, Robin. Again? Wow, yeah. Robin. playing a reactive game all the time so our deck crushes that kind of playstyle so we don't mind that at all uh, monk and um, hero power hmm. or just play the good luck I'm thinking about it would you rather I'm looking at the, like, next turn it's going to be Vine Cleaver, right? Mm. Mm. I do yeah. definitely like the Monk. Monk can go on the far left, and he can go face for one. That's always happening. Just considering whether the uh, Galaka Crawler is fine. I think in our deck it is, yeah. I just play the Galaka uh, center is fine between the 1-4 and the 2-4-3. There's a few Flame Strikes you hear. You can... Probably just get the jelly going. That's fine. Mm. So I'm yeah. not too worried. And for anything else, the crab is probably better. Okay. Oh. Too good of a turn. But mm. but we wine cleaver? Yeah, wine cleaver is great. And hit him. Yep, yep. Yeah, he's probably going to now flame strike, and then that's really good for him, like the way how he was able to set that up. But because we have Vine Cleaver, um, it's like he's not going to be ahead. He's just not going to be that far behind. Oh, <clears throat> at least it wasn't Silver Sword. <laughs> yeah. Right. It was now I, I think if you have flame strike, you flame strike, and then you ooze, right? So. Yes. So but he, that he being doesn't. said, we might not want to risk our jelly. So we consecrate and... Um, it might just be like very slow. Because mm. I think I always trade the crab into the 3-2 and the 1-1 one, one into the 2-1 and then go face with the others. Because there's no need to waste consecrate, right? Mm -hmm. No. Not no. if we you know, expect him maybe more AoEs in his deck. So what are you doing with? Well, we'll do the we'll playing. do the board first, right? So two into the three two, one into the two one, face with our guys. You see what I mean? Yeah. Okay. This one. Yep, yep. And then one one into the two one. No, 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 no. One one. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then go face. Just testing. Sure. Okay. 
I think it is Basilisk Hero Power, because um, if you don't at least Basilisk, he can just play a Furious Etten or something, right? So, yeah. That's fine. Positioning-wise, where does where should that have gone? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So make a dude and then far right. Uh, we don't make the Lost in the Jungle. We just pass. Because we're still afraid of AoE, right? Because Ping Flame Strike is still pretty good for him here. Mm. Uh, Ping Blizzard is still pretty good for him here. But if we don't play that Basilisk, he can just, yeah, he can just get away with. Uh, Two Blizzards. Now stop. Okay. So I guess we play Volcanothor. We Hero could... power first, and then Volcanothor on the far right. Yeah. So that if he has Meteor, he needs to ping the 1-1 one, one first. Attack, attack, attack. I'd go health. We just need to be on the board, right? So just make the most annoying thing for him. I knew you would say that, but then... Oh. It's not as fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, can't be targeted? Yeah, can't be targeted. It's a very good roll. Job's done. Yes. Because he's just waiting until we run out of stuff. Now, fortunately for us, we drafted a lot of stuff, so... <laughs> a lot of decks are already out of cards by now, right? Because that's Polymorph Cone, two Blizzards. He used our weapon as well, so... He killed a lot of our cards already, but... We're being very efficient, because a lot of our cards are just big. So we got to kill that, and we do that with the Kainosaur. Um, I'll, I'm just gonna do this turn just because I'm, you know, I wanna, I wanna just yeah. check for a lot of things. So, just freeze his face with the shard. Just put it somewhere. It's fine. We're just checking step by step here. Play the uh, Lost in the Jungle. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. For duty. Okay. So it's probably vaporize. Yeah, it looks like we will not be hitting face then. That's fine. Just consecration and then trade the one one into the two one, the three two into the five three, and then just hero power. And don't go phase. One one. Yeah. And then three and then hero power pass. I wanna save health on the volcano star because it's not targetable, so you can only kill it with um, with AoE effects. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or minions. <laughs> Locked and loaded. You, you gotta be kidding me. So we can just make his minions cost three more and play the Sleepy Dragon. Go face with one one. Yeah, let's go face with a one one. Go from there. Okay. So. Mm. I think. Yeah, I think it's Jelly on the left hand side. An apple bomb on the far right, and then put the volcano star into the two-two. Push one phase. I think that's slightly better because then he has to run into the small taunts now, right? Mm. Yeah, first you have to you can kill the the rotten stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Perfect draw. Ah, perfect. Yeah, just play out, push five. I was thinking that positioning might have been able to be better, but that'd be a lot of thinking for like the minimum thing. Play the dragon. Yeah, yeah, play the dragon push. And he's like, "Oh my god, dude, how much stuff do you have?" You're a paladin! <laughs> You're supposed to be out of cards two turns ago. You require my oh my god. Ugh. Oh my god, you're kidding. Alright. Um, okay. Quality, right? Oof. 
Okay. That's not doesn't, a... doesn't help. Right. That's so fucking lame. He's just gonna win because... Oh, his deck is so insane! Oh, that's so stupid! <laughs> It's gonna win because of fireballs. So yeah, it's just gonna win because it's like, oh, by the way, it's it's like terror, right? Not as bad, but it feels like that. And now, yeah, his fireballs is gonna produce more fireballs, right? Yeah, yeah he's gonna double fireball the, the sleepy, and then he's going to trade the volcano sorry, and ping our one one. Hmm. And there's nothing we can do about it. Damn it! What if we hero power and? Might the the dude? He has mana, right? He will just fireball, fireball, ping, trade. And yeah, it's, ping. it's fine. Like just trade, trade, hero power. Go face with your face. That's all you can do. But he's won the game. That's so ridiculous. Man. Yeah. It's just like certain cards just shouldn't be in arena, like Terran, Antonidas. Like, <laughs> like it's it's not like Antonidas is a death knight, but if if you don't have the answer for it straight away, it, it sure feels like one. Damn it. Okay. He's retarded. What the hell? He must have a to? pyro far left for I don't know what else can compel him to make this play. Be wow, might, uh... okay, well, might your dragon kill his guy? Hero Power Crusader, my god. That's why what? you never give up. Yeah, 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 but what <laughs> the fuck? I think you can yeah. keep going phase with your weapon. We want keep. them all. Yeah, we want them all or the Silver Sword anyway. Holy shit, you just double fireball the Sleepy every time there. He must have Pyro, right? Or something. No, he's thinking about the left card. Shh, we have a chance. We are still in it, yeah. <laughs> I am just astounded. 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 <laughs> hero power, blade. Yeah, master. hero power, blade, push five. Reporting for duty. Murder! Holding. Ooh. Holding weapon. Yep. Yeah, the last one I hold because the the two two from the Crusader in the face might have to kill the two three. Yep. <laughs> wow. Super throw. So he's got. Six, eight, nine, fifteen. It's going to trade the amalgam. It's kind of dangerous, but I'm not sure what we can do. If we trade there, the amalgam trade is there. Thing there. Trade here. Mm. It's kind of a tough situation, but I think it's hero power and blade master into the two two push five. Because he wants to trade with his amalgam, and now you've taken away that juicy trade for him. So, yeah, that's fine. Just preemptively fireball phase. Why not? No. Okay. Mm. So he's got. Why don't they have uh, charts, these dudes? <laughs> So he's at 6, 12, 13. 13 yeah. I mean, we always play the lost, we always hero power. That's no no question about it. Reporting for duty. Reporting for duty. So now we have 8, 9. So we set up lethal. Yeah, the gut reaction is just go face because he's got 6, 12, 13 right now. So I think you just go 5 face. Um, yeah. Probably even face. Ghost face. I'm thinking about it. We have a quality though. So if you put him to 7, the mall is lethal with just the 5. Mm. 
We yeah, could I think you push face with your face, because there's two weapons we want. If he has an AoE, I think he wins anyway, so... Mm. Damn. It's a fireball. <laughs> of course he has a third blizzard. Oh, why not? This is so puke-worthy. <laughs> puke-worthy. That's a good word. Oh, we would have had it as well. Oh my god. Six, Five, eight, nine, eight, fourteen. Yeah, it's got more than enough. That's so dumb. He threw the game. He threw the game so hard, but just because his deck is absolutely disgusting, he wins. He's just sitting there, I have fireball, yay, I win, ball stupid paladin. <laughs> <laughs> he's so happy, he's so proud of himself. Yeah. He's like, yes, yeah. oh, oh, look at all my damage, yeah, take that, yeah, pew pew. All right. Oh. Mm. It's so <sighs> painful, that loss. It's so incredibly painful. Yeah, but the um, priest. Two blizzards drafted, yeah, but he played three blizzards, Code of Cold, Flame Strike. That alone is just like. Puke worthy. Puke worthy indeed. Full keep? We're definitely keeping Lone and we're definitely keeping one of these. And then the other one is a bit debatable. I think because it's a priest and we already have a guaranteed good start, I would just keep the Justice in the loan and throw the Lost. I think it's fine. Two ones? I would throw the, the one ones, yeah. Um, just because we're we're going to have a good start, kind of, regardless. You already have Justice on one, Hero Power on two, Lone on three, that's already very strong. So then I want the Lost in the Jungle to either become a Golaka Crawler, or a Cobalt Monk, you know, or a late game card, so we already have that. Because once once you have your early game sorted, having more early uh, game I, like I... makes no difference. I'm still not, I'm confused what you were Throw saying. the lost, throw the lost, throw the lost. Okay, cool, <laughs> nice. I hope that was clear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> last second, man. <laughs> yeah. That's good, like you were very clear with what you you knew, right? At that point, I was like, Shady, I don't know what we're doing, so okay. All right, let's equip the dice justice. But did you get my explanation of why we want to throw it or not? Um, yeah, you wanted to keep it for later. For later, right? Mm, yeah. No, so pass the turn, right? So it's not that it's not going to be good in the early game. It's that it takes up a slot in your hand, which could be a different card. Believe it or not, I actually prefer this Violet Worm in my hand than the Lust. Because we can hero power here anyway, right? And have a reasonable early game. So you can hero power, right? Mm. So, yeah, so we will because have... we're playing against the Priest, you're going to want to have a lot of stuff. Right, and we pass, right? Just pass. So if you have Light's Justice and Lost in the Jungle and Lone Champion, I feel like it's overkill. Like you have too much early game. It means that there is a chance you're going to whiff on your late game and you're not going yeah. to have enough uh, resources. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. He snapped that one. So it's either like Silver Sword, Vine Cleaver, or like uh, maybe the Light's Justice that he already saw. Okay, so bump and um, loan. Bump for sure, loan for sure, and I think we preemptively use our face in there as well, just to maybe incentivize him to heal. I don't need any of you. So this is just early game pressure. This is realizing that because you might be like, well, he might just heal it, and then we wasted our life total and wasted a charge. But more than that, our opponent used his entire turn three just to hero power, right? Or if he elixirs, or if he power, like anything, right? Just like lower, lower the health on his guy. Hey, look, that pre hits worked out now, right? Like we get to kill it. I don't think he should have pre hit. I think that was a mistake on his end. Yes, so we trade it and uh, go monk. Yeah, kill it and play monk. Well, no, Zin. Not only that, 
keep in mind, he throws away the flame strike. That's huge, right? He throws away the flame strike, but he also exposes himself to steed, might, like anything, anything that buffs damage. So you can say, oh. oh, but what if you had Consecration or Primordial Drake? I'm saying like, well, not only do you throw away your flame strike, you also put yourself in a way worse spot. So it was indeed the lost, right? Yeah, that's why it was so fast. Okay, yeah. what do we do this turn? We kill one dude with our face and go two one into the free two. Um, Which so what can we do with our mana? So we could just play Cobalt and see what it hits first. We and could. I don't think the hits are like super important. So I think this is another case where we just Blade Master Hero Power and then two one and do the traits you mentioned. Because the Cobalt, if it hits, it's not like it gives you crazy crazy advantages. Because oh. even if you have a hit on the bomber and you can kill it with your face, that that changes nothing on the board. So, yeah. do we go face? Or... No, we try. We try. It's like, uh, don't like we're even though we're the aggressor, we we want really solid board control. So we don't want to give him like an elixir where he can buy a divine shield, kill the four three or anything like that. Okay. Hey. Mind if I roll me? Mm-hmm. Now we could play it. Uh, the Cobalt uh, freezes face and hero power. The whole face. What was so I'm, I'm thinking about stuff, right? I'm thinking about AoEs, I'm thinking about mind control tech, I'm thinking about spirit lash. I think freezing his face is overkill for sure, so I don't think we'll be doing that. I think we might need to freeze something next turn. I think mm -hmm. the 3-4 and the 4-3 always go face, so you can start with that. And then the most conservative play is to just trade your 1-1 and hero power. Plays around MCT, doesn't lose your weapon charge. Mm. The other play is to apprentice, kill it with the apprentice hero power, have five things on the board. Which I think is fine. So you can play apprentice, and then hero power. Uh, unless the apprentice misses everything, then you just trade with your 1-1. No, okay, just hero power, push one. I think that's acceptable, because we do want to pressure him a little bit. And we do develop a board that's not like too vulnerable to MC tech, because we will yeah. want to spread at some point for the Silver Sword, so it may as well get the check out of the way. Okay. It's very, very good for us. Nice. Shields mm up. -hmm. So, dude goes, dude goes into the 2-1. Um, face might go in, right? Face might go in, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, think because yeah, we have Silver yeah. Sword in our hand, right? Our face definitely goes into the 2-1. So, let's start with that. Yeah. And so, what do you want to do this round? 3-4, trace off the 2-3. Um, what we want to do with all mana? Can't really do anything, so we could just freeze the face. I think here I would freeze his minion, blessing of might, your three four hero power, full face. Because then, Which by trading with the three four, you open yourself up to holy nova. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you might argue, well, you could just trade in the little guys, but. We want those for Silver Sword, because if he just plays like a Furious Ethan, then you're sad that you sacrificed your board. So this is what we call just a hedge, right? We're saying, okay, if you have Nova, I'm not going to lose my Monk. If you have a big minion, I have a giant board for Silver Sword. So it's pretty much just Psychic Scream, in which case going face just pushes more damage, which is also acceptable. So yeah. there's another one. Hmm. No, 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 no. Yeah, so Silver Sword is still lethal now. Cool. So, this guy's, that was a good turn. And that's just difficult to, you know, consistently do. But that's just experience, right? When you, you, you have the certain cards that you play around. So there's Shadow Manus against Priest. There's Nova. To an extent, Scream, but. Unfortunately, there's not that much you can do against it. He can't Duskbreaker and Death once again, so you're just making it a lot less likely that your opponent has an answer to your board. 
Yeah. And when you're playing against Priest, or whenever you're in the aggressive position, that's your goal. You want to create a board that's as difficult to deal with as possible. So as little answers as possible. So I think we reduced it to one card, Scream. Like if you didn't have Scream, he was dead there. So that's what you constantly want to do when you're pushing against Control. Give him as little outs as possible. Yeah, that makes sense. Hmm. Okay. Um, up against rope. So I think keeping the two because yeah, just keep sometimes right. sounds good. Sometimes runs pirates these rooks. Yeah, but even if this was not a rogue, that's why we drafted it, right? Just to get a little bit of early game. Because mm. our deck is packing a lot of big boys, we just need to get there. Job's done. Hey, by the way, Kaladar. I don't believe I said hi, but I spotted you in the chat. Mm. Should we just play it? Yep, just play it. Just tempo, tempo, tempo. Like a paladin is nothing without the board, so just try to get the board. <laughs> Calm down, I'm a doctor. Otter of the Red Wall, welcome. Thanks so much for the sub. Thanks for the support. Hope you're having a good time here. So one line is to basilisk, but he can. Ping. The, the problem with Basilisk is that he will dagger your crab and then trade your crab for free. And then you will have Basilisk versus a 2 on and a weapon, which is really awkward. Mm. So we just play Frost Rider and pass, that's fine. We don't have to go face because it's it's not too relevant. We just need to not we just need to not lose the board. Which Because yeah. now he might have, say. Shadow Blade, kill the 4-4, four, four. you might play Crusader, you might go double bell, but having that crab be ready to attack is useful. Okay, so he makes the play, which we were... He could coin a Vistrate here, that would really suck, but if it's not coin a Vistrate, we're in good shape. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, Stonehill? Why? Um, you yeah, because protect I feel... Four, four? Oh. Or? No, no, it's more like if I, if I play Basilisk, you, he will dagger it and then trade it. Well, so we have I, a 4-4, four, four, right? We can get rid of his 2-1. That is true, yeah. And we can just play a 4-drop, right? Just play a Crusader, trade this guy. Mm -hmm. Like, the early phase damage with a deck like this is not too relevant. It's just like, get the board, get the board. That's, that's just your mantra throughout the entire early game. Just get the board, get the board. Because then once you have the board, you can do disgusting things, right? You have the Maul, you have Silver Sword, you have Sound of Bells, it's just... We can do some nasty stuff. Yeah, like now. Yeah. Blade Master? Hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. We could... Uh, gold, gold Run? Yeah, but it's, that's that's not enough... Per I'm thinking about Sound of Bells for Tempo. Um, I think I'm actually quite happy with Sound of Bells on the Frost Rider at least once, and then... We'll go from there. I'm thinking how much tempo I want here. <clears throat> I think it's either Stonehill or Basilisk. I was thinking um, about it, but to me it seemed to did it's, it's a bit wasteful, stuff. right? But just this is why it's fine. We just want the board. I think it's Stonehill in the center, please. And then the 5 4 will trade after we pick. Harem, nice GG. Okay. <laughs> So 5-4? Five, 5-4 four. Five, four goes in and then 5 phase. So what I was specifically thinking about here was to play the Basilisk, but then Fan of Knives becomes really good. He gets to Fan, stab your Basilisk, and that's a way for him to get back in the game. Whereas if we do this, it's really difficult for him to do something. So would you Blade Master and Cauldron this time? Still no need for the Cauldron, I think. We're just killing him, right? So we can definitely do 11 phase. We can start with that. So I'm thinking Blade Master and Basilisk. I'm just thinking about the positioning because we're uh, we're a little bit afraid of the betrayal. Um, so now you, why are you not afraid of Fen now? Oh, because he's only got three mana after that. He's just dying, right? Like last turn, the Fen was significantly better. Now oh, he's okay. already taking five from the five one. Hmm. Okay. 
Uh, I think it's Blade Master on the far right, and then Basilisk on the far right again. So okay. the situation changes from turn to turn. Uh, last turn, if we had played Basilisk, we would be left with a 5-1. If he fans, mm. right? Now if he fans, he's got three mana left. He trades your guy. You have like, you know, nine damage. He stabs the thing. You you're still in a really good spot, that's for sure. It's it's a bit dependent on your deck. If you have a more reactive deck, I think the messenger is uh, definitely good. Whoa. Oh. Full mold? Yeah, full mold. The higher up we go, the more likely it is that the priest isn't going to be like a rush priest, but we still want some early game. Ooh, what that is a is whiff. <laughs> Damn. Mm. Mm. This could be a very fast loss. Okay. Yeah. You're going to take your break after the coaching session? Um, I'm going to see how long it takes. I think I'm going to at least start up the run with Collins. <clears throat> Make it do it. Yep. So yeah, as predicted, a bit of a slower priest, not like the coin pew pew pew. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> freeze the wolf. Yeah, freeze make, the wolf. Make, it up. make a guy go face. This is just trying to survive, right? We're just trying to make a board where we maybe get a good blessing of mind. Potion of Madness being gone really helps with feeling a bit safer with this play because he could coin Shadow Mana straight, but that's really not that great. You know, it's like okay, it might potion be the best Madness. play. So. But before that... they could go like Potion of Madness straight, play a two drop, and it's just way worse. Yeah. Target the two one or just a boy, <laughs> just a boy. Okay. Oh, this could swing. This could swing the board mm. to us. Sorry, which card do you want? Uh, consecrate and trade. Uh, well, cauldron blessing of might is pretty good here as well, right? What would? Yeah, I think we I think we start with the cauldron and put uh, the two one into the dog. See what you get. And then we Blessing of Might and trade a Recruit. Because then you get to keep your Consecration, you cycle some cards, you might get some plays. So. Okay, pretty yeah. good. Pretty good hit. Yep. Much better. Yeah. Because if you go for the Consecration, you keep a better board. I agree. But there's no chance, there's no guarantee that you'll keep that board. Yeah, Whereas if you go not... for this play, it's it's a bit more likely that you're, giving you, that you're yeah. gonna be on the board. And it's not that much better. <laughs> The board was yeah, just, just it's only marginally better. That's correct. So, shall we sack the one one? Sack the one one. Yeah. Get some more options first. Mm. Play that and uh, freeze freeze the dude, the, the guy for free die, if you want it. Yeah. So, a big problem with that play is Holy Nova will deal three damage now. So the spirit wolves will just mm. get splattered. So I think we just use the earthen might on the cauldron, the the two, yeah, and then we can just trade frost shock hero power. Because all we got to do is stay relevant now, right? Because leaving spell power up and then playing a lot of three health minions, I feel like we just, you know, it might work out really well, right? But he might also have a nova, and we might be very sad. Oh, sorry, guys. No idea what's going what's on. That? <laughs> I really feel like some days my upstairs neighbor's just like, let's bang some pipes, let's go. Bam. Like... <laughs> I think we successfully stalled until the late game with our bad opener. That's good. Yeah. So we trade off the dude and play Lone Champ and Feral Spirit. Well, we will get overloaded, right? And turn seven is looking pretty good, so I don't want to play Ferals this turn. No. So with that in mind, what do you want to do then? Just play the monk. Yep. Monk hero power. 
Push my face. I am one with the candle. Reporting for two Even if he goes trade Nova, we just find Cleaver, so that's fine. Because you might trade the 1-1 one -one preemptively to play around Bump Nova. But if he bumps Nova, like we're fine with that. We just find Cleaver and we're ahead on board. If the Nova was really, really good for him, I would have probably just traded the 1-1. One -one. Okay. And face. Uh, <clears throat> so, do we still want to wine cleaver or do we want to all kind of saw? It's about our health here, right? So, if we vine cleaver, we'd probably kill the 6 6, which would leave him with a 4 7. We'd be on 20, he'd go face, we'd be on 16, and we'd have taunts. We'd probably hit him again, we'd go to 12. Yeah, I would just vine cleaver, kill the 6 6, and then push 3. Because with Vine Cleaver, it really feels like this. If you get it rolling early enough, it will it will kind of bail you out. Because there's just so much value coming off this one card. Value and tempo, right? Hey. Oh, well, I mean, there's way worse targets for that, so... Okay. So we just traded into the... Guy... Um... Yeah, I'm just looking at what the mana is doing right now. It's, uh, so yeah, the monk goes in and phase goes in. That's fine. And then the dudes go phase because of that. So we're going to have four, five. Could make two more dudes. Hmm. Oh, but it won't work. I think it's just Volcano Sir. Yeah, Let's see what we get. You got health, health. Yeah, health is good again. Divine shield. Hmm, maybe Venturi. Hmm. He gets the free two. Four, ten, fourteen, sixteen. Let's go with the divine shield. Let's play it safe. Yep. I'll do. I think Wind Fury would be powerful. I think we we don't really want to use our face to trade too much. So. Let me show you the mm, no, not right now. You know okay. Well, he's desperate. That's good. We could consecrate and get rid of the board. We wanted to... That almost always happens, I think. That's just a very powerful consecration. So, yep. Which consecration is fine. To choose. And we can make the we can make the cheap trades. The one one into the two one, two one ones into the three two, face into the one two, and then hit him in the face. Now let's just talk about what the uh, other cards do. So our opponent's gonna go down to 14, he heals back up to 16, 6, 7, 8. I think it's the uh, Ferals and the Hero Power. I don't really want to play Sleepy anyway next turn. 6, 7, 8, 12, yeah. Ooh. Lots of board. So that's just systematically, right? I, I wasn't 100% sure what we were going to do that turn, but I knew the things that were going to happen, right? I knew that we were going to Consecrate. Like you said, it's really good there. And I knew that we were going to uh, trade with the weapon there. I also knew that we probably didn't want Sleepy Dragon just because that would make the... Uh, that would make the... Uh, the Mind Control really bad here. I think we just play, play cards and... I'm yeah, I don't think we play Apple Bomb, face. right? Because of my control. So I think 1-1 one, one into a 1-1 one, one face with the rest is fine. And then it's it'll be easier to see what we don't want to do, right? So 
So which of these cards do you want? Um, I think maybe Paragon. Yeah, I think Paragon hero power is enough. Because mind control will kill him, so mind control is not our concern. There we go. Whoa. Good stuff. Yeah. It's good. Overall, like the Apple Bomb as well just felt really good every time we played it. Mm -hmm. so I feel yeah. like the system. I guess Maul over Stone Hill was like the most awkward one, right? That was the one we. Oh, you talked about the longest. That was a, that was a big <laughs> one. Yeah. Um, I think Stone Hill could be important here because it's. Um, the mirror matchup. Um, Why? Yeah, because we could get one of those game changes. We could, but we could also just lose three mana in the process of fishing for it and not finding it. <laughs> I'm just Always. saying, right? I think if we just keep the lone champion, we increase our chance for one or two, right? Because pally be pally, it's kind of like with that rogue, right? It's just board, 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 board. Like screw the value. So mm. we just keep the lone. Try to get okay. a one. Try to get a two. Go full uh, full tempo. Consecration's also I'm, good. That's that's actually I, more of a game changer than Stonehill is in this matchup. Because that's one of the ways where if he does have more early game than you, you can come back with consecration. And it does look like yeah. he will have more early game than us. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a good draw. Let's see that. Rip. He was dead if he MC'd the apple bomb, no? Uh, was he? Because he's getting the healing from the Apple Bomb as well, right? But I guess so, it's Neo. Yeah, this guy is all about the... the early. I see. <laughs> but so are we. Here comes the Lone Champ. Yeah, the Lone is so good. Like, if you're a little bit behind, you just completely shuts down the early aggression. Okay. He counters Tort Divine Shielders. Uh, Prentice. This one thing. Yeah, I'm just thinking about it, right? Because Bump Consecrate would put him off the board. But... It's a little early, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah maybe. Yeah, maybe. What would you I'm just thinking if Apprentice could whiff, right? How bad is that? Like if it just hits the 1 2 once and then phase twice or something. Oh, that's so unlikely. Mm. The other one is Crusader Bump. He trades, he trades. You still have Consecrate. You next turn can apprentice. Mm. What would Maybe it's a good I think it's just then. Crusader. Crusader and Bump. Because it's. I think Crusader is the middle of the road play where it's a little. Uh, it's a little too early, Consec. I agree. Because right? you might just mm. go like Call the Arms here, right? And then, you know, you wish you had Consecration. But if the yeah. apprentice whiffs, I think we might just straight up lose that. You know, like he hits face twice and the elemental ones, and I think the game ends on the spot. It's a gamble, yeah. No. And I don't think we need to take it. Oh. I am one with the candle. It's fine. So we could. Do it now, and then if it doesn't hit uh, the monk once, we can blessing it. What would Trade it. do? Mm. See, what I was thinking is we put the five two into the one two, and then just apprentice and hero power, and then just pass, and then next turn we can trade back if we want it. Because that still puts the spreads out. That might still make the consecration fine. What would Uther do? So you go. This yeah. way. I go there and then I apprentice hero power. And then if he wants to coin steed, we still get that five on that response. So. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's not a cost free trade. Get a two two. Okay, it's a good start. No consecration in his hand. 
Probably Potion of Heroism? Truth is mm. Sure. One more. It's easy to kill. Uh, uh. So pump and trade. Potentially consecrate Possible. now. Uh, uh, Let's see. Which path it also. You could buff. Yeah, but what do buffs do? I mean, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, for the... Because, like, the bells later is still going to be good, right? I think it's it's a good Consecrate turn. Use Consecration and then trade with your uh, 5 into his Sunwalker. It also gets him off the board for Steed if he had it. And I think you just Hero Power, push 1, and then you have a 7 next turn, and then a 7 in Might the turn after. And then bells. Reporting for duty. So we want the weapon now, right? Probably. Getting volcano saw rolling is also nice. But I think weapon into the one one double trade the loot order is better. Yeah. Because it sets up more stuff. It's less likely he can you know have a good swing. Because if he uh, if we volcano saw and he has an equality, he can swing the board. Now it's harder for him to swing the board. <clears throat> Did you get that from? Uh... Uh, yeah. Okay. So maybe this is a bell's turn. I, I agree. So. Yeah, so, so I think it's one bell on one of them, and then face and that guy into the two six, and then triple bell the other one to kill the one four. Reporting for duty. Yep, that looks good. So that's just filling in the details, right? Keeping him off that board. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> that was enough. Yeah. Ringing for him. I mean, he just feels like he's just he's just trying to throw stuff out and to have something survive, and it's just not working. So. All right. So, spreading plague. That's my number one concern versus this guy. <laughs> yeah, I heard you. Say that the other day. My homework, man. Plague, 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 plague. Just, <laughs> I, I got, I lost so many times to it now that I'm like, no, no more, no more. Um, I'm not. Maybe we should keep both threes because we have the coin. Yeah, I want to just keep both the threes and look for, uh, look for either a one or a good four. Mm. Be good. Nope. Not good. Not useless, but not good. Hmm. That's good, though. Yeah. Um. So it's either to coin a two five. Or for free, so I think for free, kind of blade master. Hmm. I'm thinking if it's I ever just blood fan, just considering it. No, I think the blade master will do, in case he's got like a slower start with stone hill or something. If it's star creeper, we can just paragon. He wants to get cute. Like they have that two four guy, right? That two four would be really good against the blood friend. Ah, there we go. We were fishing for that. 
I guess stone hills are more common, higher win rates. So. I knew he would play Estonian. Mm, okay, good. <laughs> Lessons are paying off, I see. Right. <laughs> uh, so we trade, good right? Whip. Start with that. But that's, yeah. And then which three drop feels better here? Uh, the two for five. Yep, for me too. Let me light the way. Job's done. But it's lifesteal, I didn't even know. Only if it gets one extra damage. Oh, we need the we yep. need the direwolf. Okay. Direwolf or bells, blessing of mine. Yeah. Yeah. It's a couple ways. Not that we need the life steal right now. Though. Oh, 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 oh! He's twigging. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, yeah. Th so I think we play a, a free drop and blessing the. Yeah, so Stono is fine. Out of my should we take the Lich King? I think we should. Good yeah. call. And then mine to 2-5 and start jamming. Yeah, there are some cases where you don't pick it and you need the early game, but this is definitely not one of them. <laughs> Job done. <clears throat> Just Batman, no Tyrion. <laughs> We're okay with uh, I like Lich King more than Tyrion anyway. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah, the weapon is very... <clears throat> so trade off Stonehill. Um, you can just play the three and the two afterwards. Think of the homework, right? <laughs> What, yeah. what are we afraid of? Um, oh, yeah, I forgot. It's into his turn six also. Why yeah. Not? So I think just the blood fan trade the stone ill, push face pass no dude. Because you you could do other things right. You could go off with the apprentice, try to snipe it, keep your stone ill alive, all that. But just don't let him play for a million. <laughs> so this one. Uh, yeah, weapon. just go face. I wouldn't equip the Maul. I would just keep it as it is. Because if you if you play Maul, he can hero power and kill one of your guys. So just chilling. <clears throat> he seems really happy to get the ten mana next turn. So it looks like our opponent will be uh, making a five five. So how does it work? Uh, can he he can use all the no? Um, not, well, he needs empty. he needs one more turn, right? He needs one more turn. But the moment it hits, he gets ten fresh crystals. So it's pretty bad for us. Oh, it is. But he will be dead. Um. Well, Oops. he's gonna gain a lot of armor from the UI, so. Mm. It's an awkward situation to be in, to be honest. Because we have nothing to pressure with. No, only the apprentice will deal free. Yeah. I think we just play the weapon and the apprentice and then go face. Mm. Weapon first, weapon. Mm. Oh, shit. Oh, you wanted to have taunt? Yeah, why? If you give it taunt, you can kill it. Oh. Okay. It's, not always, uh, it's not always beneficial. Yeah, full face. The, uh, that was was what I meant, but I had it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah. I feel like we needed to deal the damage to play around UI. So yeah, not consecrate kills him. Feels good. Would have been lethal if we equipped the terror weapon. But just consecration. So he's it. He's on also? one HP. It deals phase damage. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even see that. I was looking at the scarabs. God. Now he thinks you're slow rolling it. But that feels good though, right? We, we held back for when we did. Um, I didn't think we were in a rush, Keith, until he nourished, so I think the weapon equip was okay when we did it. Because it there was a significant downside to equipping the weapon. Good thing we didn't go with my play then. 
past so dreadfully. Okay. Um, just throw the equality. I would probably throw the mall as well because there's no guarantee it's going to be a good early game mall. So I would keep the crawler and the monk and look for uh, an early game card. Okay. Like if you Such... get the taunt, it's actually quite a weak card. Okay. Whereas Frost Rider is a premium card. It's actually a really good uh, hand. I like it. It's uh, yeah. Two, three, a lot of, four, lot of time. And uh, coin Frost Rider. Yeah, coin the Frosty. Job done. Ride the Polar Bear Express. Which card do you think is best? Lone Champion or Frost Rider? If, if played. It depends yeah, on the deck. Yeah. Um, if, if played on. Like, like we just did. I think most of the time Frost Rider is mm -hmm. just a very powerful card. Um, so we could either equip the weapon and play the crawler, or we could play the 2 5. Um, let's see, trade here. I think the 2 5 is best. I think we, uh, we kill the crocodile, so that's a good start. He kills the Frost Rider, then we have a 2-5. I think I prefer the Crab and the Light's Justice. Yeah. I think I might even push one face with it. Yeah, because we're kind of on a blank lever on curve. So. Because I see Monk on 4, Apple Bomb on 5, so there's no time to equip the Justice in between. So, ah, okay, that's the reason. Yeah. It might also bait out a uh, hero power, uh, I mean an ooze, so... And this is fine, right? Yeah. Like, he gets to kill it, he couldn't do that with the 2-5, but the 2-5 wouldn't have been able to clear, whereas the weapon can, so now we can just monk and kill it, and he's off the board. Which is probably slightly better than the variant, the other variant. Yeah. Another point for the weapon here, being able to snipe the demo, that's good. Yeah. <coughs> Apple bomb, kill the one for it. Just like going over the easy turns, right? Because it seems like he pre-hits, so he's expecting us to go in. So the taunt will mess with his calculations. Whereas if we play mm. Basilisk Blue Torter, we just give him, you know, good trades. It's no point in that. Um, Rogue Pally, Crawl, and testing Warrior Druid Warlock. I think it's one of those. Mm -hmm. Play the two free frees or oh, free drops. There's a possibility. Yeah. Um, I think you put the monk in the center because we're probably going to want to buff the paragon later. And then you trade with the monk. See what I mean? Like paragon on the left, basilisk on the right, the and then trade mm -hmm. with the monk. I think you hold the weapon charge here to not telegraph Vank Cleaver. I think it's worth it. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Because you will not expect Van Cleaver if you uh, don't swing. If you swing, it's this telegraph like, wait, why would he waste his last charge? Oh, he's got Van Cleaver, okay. Cool. Yeah. And played right into the Ready, cleaver. Sir. Nice. <laughs> yep, cleaver to 4-4, four, 2-5 four, into the 2-2, two, two, push 1. Good, good, good. Rolling, 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 rolling. Yeah, indeed. <clears throat> oh, 
I forgot to bet for 12. Say again? I forgot to bet for 12. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So with this hand, we always stone hill, right? So you can position in between the 2-3 and the Basilisk because we probably want to buff up the Paragon, so we don't want to open up the Basilisk getting a poison on our guy. Whoa. You see what I mean? Now <laughs> yeah, I mean, now it is, right? Now it is. <laughs> it's a shame we, we would have wanted this in the next game. Yeah, we picked the Tarim. It's too good. Especially with our board right now. It's kind of dirty. Yeah. yeah. Don't pick it too fast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so Basilisk into the no face face into the three three, and then just uh, I think you trade a one one into the two five, play a loot order, go face, just the recruits, yeah. Just go face and loot order. Okay, okay. I don't want to mite yet, because we're gonna we're gonna tear him this right. So. Mm. How do you always get Tarim? Well, I don't. I don't. I just get it like 9 out of 10 times. That 1 out of 10, it's really rough, right? They're sitting there like, how am I supposed to win? I don't have a It's crazy. Um, what happens? You cannot do that now. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he's dead in a lot of cases. Um, does Basilisk this into the 6-6? Six, six? <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. Basil's can do 6 6. And then I think you put Terran between the 1 1. Oh, he's dead. Okay. Just Terran in face. Oh, yeah. He's like, damn, hey. he saw it. <laughs> he could put Basil's can do the 6 6. He saw it. Okay. Oof, okay. So it's gonna be interesting, the fouls and shit. So, throw them all. The monk is tempting, but I think we do need to throw them all, yeah. Because for all we know, this is just a zoo deck ready to crush us. So, can't afford to not have anything early. Hmm. <laughs> well, <laughs> our comeback is in the hand, so yeah, that allows yeah. us to play different if we need it. Job's done. Yep. Job's done. Hi, roll, please. Oh, yes. Baby. Okay. <laughs> Mind if I roll me. Job's done. Are we to control this game? It's possible. Stone Hill? Stone Hill. Yeah. Uh, just no other options, really. Ah, oh, there's my boy. How this you is... doing, Tarim? Yeah. See what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's good, right? It's good. But Paladin's so consistent that if you don't need it, I would go for the consistently, you know. Or like more consistent early game. This card is also very good. Mm. Frost Rider. So with Frost Rider, he will put the 2-2 two -two into our guy. He will put the 4 into the Frost Rider. You see what I mean, right? Yeah, but what else can we do? Well, you might just use them all here, right? Like, it's painful, um, but it's, it's either that or Consecration. It's one of those two. We have another Consecration, so. No, we only have one, so it's either oh. break up the Equality Consecrate or use them all. Mm, I think we can break up the Equality Consecrate. I think I just Consecrate and then go face. Because next turn we can go Frost Rider something and then we can Maul later, right? Yeah. That was a very good hand. It's painful to throw away the uh, combo, but the... Um, I think the Maul is, like, if the Maul was anything less, I'd probably Maul here. But the, the Divine Shield Maul can be so devastating. Mm. 
Oh, you can't hear the diggy? Guys, sorry. Oh, it's yeah. okay. Right. We got some mid-game digging. <laughs> Let's go, boys! All right. So. Um, Frost Rider freezes guy. Yeah, Frost Rider freezes guy. Pass. The other one was Cauldron and prep for Terran, but I, this, I like this more because it leaves you options. Oh, we could have got face with the... No, no, no. You want it active. Oh, if yeah. You, if you Terran, it's a 3 3, so. It's much better. Next turn we could Cauldron plus Maul, oh my god. And then we could tear him down. <laughs> so dirty. This one is a bit trickier, but I think we um, we play the cauldron. We put the four four into the one three first. Then we maul. Then we put our face into the five one. And then we put the two one into the five one again and face with the taunt. And that's a really tough for to crack, I think. Face with the rest. Yeah, face. That's one. Yeah. It's even the... F oh no, the foul actually does it. Oh my god, no. We should have traded the other way around, but I wanted to keep the taunt. But the foul actually does it here. Okay, no mind. As good as that is for him, that's actually nothing compared to what the foul would do. <laughs> into the 6-6 six, six and face into the 6-6. Six, six. Uh, I'm looking at it. It might be a term turn. Not forked. Yeah, the forked is awkward because we can't guarantee it, right? Yeah, but if we kill the 6-6 six, six first... And then forked is still bad. I think... F leading with the forked is okay. We can start with this. forked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Lead with fork. Yeah, fork. Just wanna see where it goes. Mm. Okay. Trade the 4 3. See what you get. It's probably fine to play slow here. Yeah, just go crawl or hero power and pass. Because the next turn we still have Terran if you want. We could have also equality, but we couldn't do equality and Terran. This was actually a tough line. Mm. Uh, nothing. With auto. Yeah, it was fine, right? Like, that's why I was, Oh, well. Oopsie. Yeah. Gave us an additional Totemic Might, buddy. <laughs> Don't you we feel bad play, now? We can, uh -huh. we can play them out now. <laughs> Just to get rid of them. Um... It's fine, we're still in a really good spot, it's just <laughs> awkward. Six mana. Hmm. Don't really have anything we can play. Yeah. Awkward turn again, but I think I would just use my face into the mole, hero power, equip the lights justice and push two. We'll keep the totemic mites in our hands for now. Yeah, just so you don't just to make him think we have volcano and shit, right? Mm. Make him scared of hex and shit. So. Okay. Just hero power, Terry. The alternative is to equality, trade the one one, and volcano soar. Both are quite strong. Yeah. 
So if you go with the hero power and the tarim, we have two threes, two three threes in the tarim. The other one we have volcano soar and a two three. I think I prefer the equality line because equality is going to get awkward later. So equality first, then cast volcano soar. Divine Shields. And no, we'll go with uh, can be targeted for the Siphon. Yep. And then trade the 1-1. One, one. Push 2 phase. Probably push 3 phase, right? Use the weapon charge. Because Tarim is like such an insane comeback tool. Like quality is good as well, of course. We have two lost in the jungle. We can hope to draw. Yeah. So. yeah, if you hit lost, should change this. <sighs> okay. Oh, oh. High roll, but we have an answer, so it's okay. <clears throat> Smelly fish! Yummy fish! So do you want a lava burst and face that one? I think we can use the divine shield and use our face. I don't think we have to expend the lava burst. And I think I would then just play the apple bomb and the paragon and not make a dude, even though we have Tarim for both MC tech, the file and such. Because I feel like we're in a good spot. Like we might not even need Tarim to win though. So, but it's very good to have, right? It's very good to have an emergency Tarim for when he does go off. Like, play in case of emergency. <laughs> Burner Teradex. Okay. No, not okay. okay. Don't shield it. Okay. Seems like an interesting combo, but I guess he got like stealth and something weird. Oh, that's why. Well, I'm glad we held on the Terran because we might need it later. <clears throat> Just play the stupid dragon now. So I think because he had this extremely good clear, we're probably going to need Tarim, which means that playing Sleepy Dragon is going to make Tarim awkward. So I just play Monk and Hero Power, and the next turn maybe Hero Power Tarim. Hold the weapon. Yep. Slow and steady. Slow and steady. He's got 10 more cards in his deck, so... You know, we can play slow if he wants to... Uh, as long as we have the Terim to come back, he might just fatigue himself. So he will start to become aggressive at some point. It's definitely good. Ouch. Okay. He's getting himself closer to fatigue. So there are two, two buzz availabilities. Either level burst that one or play the sleepy. I think Sleepy could mm, yeah. Sleepy just means he needs four damage to kill that, right? Yeah, but then it did something. I, I'd say I'd say it's not Sleepy. I'd say it's either Hero Power Tarim and just have a three six and a three three versus that, or it's lava burst hero power. What would Uther do? How much solo does So that means we cannot play Sleepy afterwards. Um... Yeah. Hmm. I think it's actually Hero Power Terran, the more I look at it. Because yeah. we do want the board, because we have the bells now, right? Yeah. It also means that we can play Sleepy later. It's a tough call to make. Because mm. your Terran is not amazing here, but because it's Terran, it's still amazing. You know? <laughs> like, compared to any other card, what we just did was like insane. But because it's Terram, it's like, eh, we could have done better. And now what? It's probably Lava Burst in the 3 3 into the 8 8, Terram and Face into the 1 4. So we'll see what goes well with that. It might be Bells if we don't hit something good. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Um... Let's see. Shh. <sighs> 
It only goes to seven, right? If we buff it. Oh no, we can kill. Yeah, so if we. We can take it all the way up to eight attack and just use the three free and the uh, face to clear mm. off the. No, I, I think we can do better than that. I, I think we. Um, I think we always put. Lava? Mm, yeah, so Terramin phase into the 1 4, Lava burst on 3 3 into the 8 8. You can start with that. I don't think we're going to use bells. Yeah. Definitely hero power. Mm, Lost? I don't think so. I think I want that for Silver Sword or for when he AoEs. It's fine. Still two big weapons in the deck. Yeah. And the worm. Violet worm, yeah. So three good hits, but we already have Sleepy and Bells, which are two late game plays. It's just, um... I okay. well, still tapping. That means there's probably something in there he really wants. Oh, no, I just wanted to damage his face. Drawing. Okay. You can either play that or buff the Tarin um, four yeah, times. I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking Quadra Bell. Because that will force hard removal and then Sleepy will stick. The other one is the Worm, but that's always going to be a good body, right? Four goes up to 11, kill a 1 1. Yeah, I think you just bells four times on the turn. Push face with the turn. Ding. Well played. And then I think you just kill a 1 1. So the siphon's good, but we needed that out of the way for the sleepy. Because if you yeah. if you worm, he trades, he goes face, and then you're under pressure, and then you sleepy, and then you get wrecked. So sleepy. Yeah, and the lost in the jungle is fine now. Reporting for duty. Still no weapons. More siphon. Hopefully not. It's not super common right now. It's it's in the good bucket, so they have other things. You could try to YOLO the um, the random, but we have the one ones. So. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, I like that start. Trade. Trade. Yeah, if he's thinking about trading into the sleepy, we're doing well. That's good. Hey. Deck, damn. Yeah. Yellow card and cleave. Yeah, yellow card cleaver. I don't need any of you. Kill two free. Very likely. Just seeing if it makes sense. We're still not in a good spot. We're gonna need no. a good answer here. But yeah, kill the two three. Those totemic mites were most unfortunate. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Like one more useful spell and would have been pretty good. Just imagine one right. hex or something, right? Then it's not even a game. Brush brushing hands. Brushing hands, bloodlust. Oh, oh my oh. god. <laughs> Alright. All right. Light. Holy light. Could have potentially helped more on the turn, but... It's a mm. tough call. 
Yeah. It's a tough call. Mm. We are dead. I think we had a decent strategy. He just happened to have a lot of shit. I think the quality on the doctor was fine. Um, you don't really want to quality with your sleepy, right? ACP. So I think if you, I think sleepy is a bad player because he just like, what if he just siphons the sleepy and goes off? Hmm. Um, just throw, throw the wine cleaver, keep the rest. The ones definitely stay. I'm not sure on the cauldron, even though it looks good, like it's not really what we want to do in the mirror. No. I'm but thinking, I thinking of keeping wine cleaver and just keeping the ones. Oh. Yeah, I think you just throw the cauldron. It's because we have such a good start. Wine cleaver is such a nice card to cash in on that. Okay, perfect. Because we do have the coin, so we are a bit disadvantaged in this matchup. We want to uh, be able to come back. Just the loss is fine. Yeah. Still see what we want to do. Reporting for duty. We played against the 24 win Warlock deck, yeah. I mean, he did good shit. He, he high rolled to Stonehill, so did we. So it's not much to be said. Baby. Ooh, baby. Yeah, so definitely the justice, definitely face into his guy, and then we talk. Because you could just freeze it, leave it there, so you can pick it up next turn. Yeah. I kind of like the idea of that. Just freeze it, leave it there. Because there's no Why? guarantee he's giving you a good lights justice hit next turn, right? Oh, uh, okay. Oh, yeah. We dig once more. Let's go. Yeah. Throwing away the fun to increase the chance of winning. Yeah. <clears throat> Looks like the hold paid off as well. That's good. Um, yeah. Just play the apprentice. Why? Because there's nothing else. Yeah, there's so the apprentice loot. adds a 2 1 body on the board. So does loot order. Mm. You don't need the pings because you have your face, right? That so is true. Let's save the pings for next turn. Let's play loot order, have his guy push through. So here it's just like looking at mana might yeah. you know, throw you off a little bit. Like, the highest cost mana is usually the best play, but you always want to double check and see what exactly happens there. Yeah, we're probably holding this coin for Vine Cleaver. Yes. yes. So we still get to Vine Cleaver first, which is nice. Even though he's player one. Unless we get a really good coin play before that. You can kill that guy, but it will cost us. So if we come with 3-5, kill it, he stabs it back, gets something on the board, we apprentice and call, we apprentice and crawler. Whereas if we apprentice now, we might just swift, yeah. I think he just double bells, kill it, and then next turn, 2 and a 3, and then coin bank cleaver. Yes. Yeah, he's still getting bored. But that's yes. okay. Two two gibber. Scary. Yeah, just dude. He just dudes here. We're good. So it looks like he's got like a higher value play than he might know on the play now. No. Is he just looking at the secret first, seeing if he wants that instead? 
Like just as doing work? Absolutely. In the mirror match, this thing is deadly. This thing's probably better than Steed in the mirror match, like no joke. Because this allows this usually allows you to keep the other guy off the board so he can't steed. So it's, it's also a 2-2 two -two in his hand? 2-2? Two -two? Will it be a 2-2 two -two when he gets it in, into his hand? Uh, Kodo is gone, right? Get away, Kodo. So. Oh, you mean like when this... Oh, no, no, it'd be a 1-1. One -one. Okay, one -one. Let's see which one. Alright, Apprentice. Do some work, baby. I saved you for this moment. Go. Yes. My boy. My boy. Never lets me down. Yep. Let me just play the crawler, kill the jibber. Looking good. Whew. Thank you. Just that little decision earlier, right? Saving the apprentice. Like, look how much I did now. It's crazy. Yeah. Look. Look at this boy. I want to bet you that's redemption. Um, I don't. I don't take the bet. <laughs> I don't. I don't gamble. <laughs> uh, so here's the problem, right? We coin Vine Cleaver. It's redemption. Our one ones can kill a back. The other one is to jelly now. Let him trade in. But, mm, maybe it is still Vine Cleaver because next turn you can jelly hero power. Yeah. Thinking about it. If it's get down, it's not the end of the world because you were gonna swing anyway. If he's sniping, it might be get down. <laughs> yeah, I think it's still Vine Cleaver. Let's go. Point Vine Cleaver hit his guy. Because next turn, the Jelly Hero Power makes more sense if you can swing again. Feels like redemption, right? No bet. It's because you get the one ones on board. I'm kind of okay with it. Mm. We take a lot of damage. But we can play the Colvin there. So maybe. <laughs> man, let me get my twelve wins, man. Considering playing around Steed, you should thank him. How did he start? Oh, okay, let's get it. Never mind. Um. Jelly? Yeah, Jelly Hero Power kill us, we want. Still gets to kill the jelly, but at least he needs to make a really bad trade with his dudes. <coughs> this is probably where he steeds and we're sad. We haven't seen one. We haven't seen uh, one steed in yeah, the entire so. last steed. I'm wondering if the game goes there. No, the game definitely doesn't go different. Because if we jelly, he will just. Uh... Yeah, there we go. <laughs> if we would jelly, he would just do it the other way around. Yeah, that'd be bad. Because our Arctic is, Arctic is good, but it's. It actually, like, it doesn't really have any business being here for now. Kennesaw trying to look for maybe poisonous um, divine chair. Well, potentially we could just worm and kill the first half. We go to 13, he'd have 6, 7, 8, 9. It's not good. Mm -hmm. Try to find something with the cauldron, don't think that's pretty bad as well. That 2-6 taunt that comes out, do we ever hold? 
Uh, there's no more time for their line. It's just Worm and uh, Kabuk. And then maybe next turn. See if we get a miracle. Like, I felt like maybe it was just Cauldron hits, hope for Hex, but even a Hex there. He still just wipes you off the board. Just four off. Oh, okay. Yeah. PG. I think I went with the I went with the conventional play, which had little chance to win. But I was still like I was going over the options whether it was better to pull Canis or not. Yeah. I, I to you know to be honest, I think the chance to win is really low. Easy twelve by any means. So taking a deck like this, um, at least like watching the curve do work like that, that was very nice. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, um, let's see. Let's see what's inside. Yeah, 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 we're good. We're good. Worm was a winning line. No, no, I think Cauldron was a winning line. <laughs> like you, Cauldron, sack, get hex, hex's guy. Still more than four hundred gold, so it's nice. Turn three was meh with the hoarder. It's true. It's true. But we did have lost into Justice Breeze, so I think you can have one meth turn. Yeah, if you have a three drop, it's probably easy win. Oh, look at this. Oh. Two rest, two epics. Nice dust. Cool, cool. Good pack, good pack. <laughs>